I was wondering what, uh, because everyone's going to want our commentary on <laughs> Marvel Phase 5. Uh, you want to yeah. save that for set hood day? We will. Um, might as well, because I haven't looked into anything. I know that they've announced Phase 5 or whatever it is, yeah. but I haven't looked into anything about it. I don't know any of the names. I don't know well, any so, of the, so anything. The thing about it is I can just give you a, you know, a short list of, I think, four trailers for you to just watch casually because uh we can't um apparently people are getting hit for those trailers usually disney let you watch them but um i don't know these oh. ones apparently a no more... not comic-con usually like comic-con will have some exclusive ones that they don't want oh, okay uh, that makes sense to the public yeah well either way yeah we'll we'll only talk about them we want to but it, it'll probably be like i'm trying to think of formatting wise like maybe we'll do a um a chat efap because it's definitely a moment of like what do you guys think is going to happen in the next like five years for all of stuff we talk about and what things are coming out and what endless trash? Literally, yeah. The slot pipe, the pipelines being built. Gushing the pipeline. <laughs> it's almost like yeah. the build up before the gushing, right? It's like. <laughs> and you're just well, like yeah, oh, I don't want to think of this pipe. as the build up. I want to think of this as the <laughs> gushing. What we're doing now, it feels like the gushing. It does. It's weird, isn't it? Like. It's, we went through pandemic times. It feels like times, as bad as it can get. Still too much shit coming out, but it's like, nah, they want to go way faster than this. They want to do, like... Uh, what do you think well, their yeah. the, the genuine cap is? It probably is, like, five movies and three TV shows per year or some shit. Um, more. Because they keep... They, it seems like right now they're at four. Um, and then, like, several TV shows. Maybe they do want to push it to five, push their luck, see how they, they go. <laughs> just I don't want it to so get worse, much. but it is. Well, I mean, it's it's They'll pretty disastrous way. right now. Anyway, you know. <laughs> yeah, I've already um, talked to a couple of people about like how it's just like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm so excited. Is this a premiere? No, it's a stream. Gosh. I think the difference with um, Phase Five will be that this will be the first period where. For the most part, they're only going to be able to ruin their own shit instead of the good old things, you know? Hmm. Well, because like, it's mainly n the new characters that they've introduced rather than. Yeah, many they're of the running legacy. out of. They're actually running out of old good things to ruin, which it's like the it's like the kill limit from Zap Brannigan. Was that his name? Right. The kill bots have sort of reached their limit. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah. we're running out of uh, old good things to ruin, which means, oh, thank goodness. They're only going to be able to ruin the things that they've created now, which I are guess all bad. I was thinking about this the other day because they've announced two new Avengers films. And I was thinking about how the big appeal of Avengers was a set of pretty well-defined characters who you like interacting. That's like the fun of it. You like. Um, and you look forward. It's like, what interactions can I look at going forward that are going to be interesting? Like, yeah, Shang I can't Chi wait for such an and... Like, that'll be a really interesting conflict. Not really. Um, like, I guess Doctor Strange meets... I don't know, like Kate Bishop, like or you know, I don't, I don't know, like I'm not sure what I'm meant to be looking forward to in terms of these interactions. Well, with how um, Phase Four is gone, I don't think they are sure of what we're looking forward to. Like they don't know. Phase Five well, is probably going to be really... when we're back on some level of planning something. Well, I think the problem is we haven't built up distinct enough, well-defined characters with, um, with like. The kinds of conflicts that are going to be interesting, like Tony and, and, and Doctor Strange and Infinity War is a good one. Like, that's a good pairing. You know, that's an interesting conflict. I mean, mm -hmm. throwing the Guardians in as well is kind of interesting. Well, not kind of. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, I was about I guess to I just... say, remember when we were super excited to see Thor and the Guardians go on an adventure together? Well, yeah, that kind of yeah. speaks to what is interesting, and they didn't do it. <laughs> like... It's, uh, I don't know, I'm just not, I don't know what characters I'm meant to be really interested in anymore, except for, like, Spider-Man and the Guardians. Everybody else is either really lame or been ruined. And the Guardians are only getting one more movie. And I guess Tom uh, Holland's yeah. gonna be doing stuff until... And, well, because there will be another Spider-Man movie, but I don't know when that's happening, really. They didn't. Yeah. Deadpool wasn't on their list of stuff, even though we know that that's happening. That's kind of interesting. 
Maybe they wanted to distance that because of its rating from all the other things that they're putting out. That's because yeah, Blade is uh, going to be PG thirteen. Blade. Oh, they're doing Blade and it's PG thirteen. They are what? doing Blade. Yeah. Oh uh, no. Well, <laughs> is that as part of? Was that? Because I, I haven't even got. I'm gonna have to ask you if you can find Blade, um, yeah. the sort of the images you know what, that the do the whole sludge image. the yeah. sludge images. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and we should probably. Avoid talking about it because we'll we'll do this on Saturday. We'll but likely, about it. Um, sure. Did I tell yeah, you right. both that I got into a a story debate with Adam and Sitch like on an, the other day? I think you told you were me. going to tell me that you were going to tell me, and then you had to leave, and you never came. Back. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you about it. Bye, and then never came Bye. back. Bye. It's like you bet, Mahler, I'll be here all day, and then you never came back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's um, okay. What is up with the Adam and Sitch story debate? It was kind like, of interesting. It, about... it was like it's how different. everyone's still trying to figure out like what is that that core most important ingredient for like storytelling. Um, uh, I'm not sure what Adam would have said his was. He was sort of bouncing around between like things he finds interesting in stories. Uh, I think Sitch was going with um, emotional like immersion or emotional uh, resonance. I think that's something. As far as what makes a story important or impactful good. or good okay yeah obviously i went with continuity um i mean yeah we just had backs and forths about all different kinds of things it was you know um mm -hmm. it was a couple of things that i'm familiar with like sitch was appealing to you know if uh, if a movie makes sense but nobody likes it then it's not good is it and it's like hmm 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 and then you just do like counter examples. We we're like, what if that mm -hmm. did happen? And then ten years later, everyone was like, "Oh shit! Actually, no, it's really good." What was the film? Did it change in terms of quality? Seems like humans can be a little bit fleeting with their emotions. Meanwhile, the content itself didn't change at all. So, what does that mean? I don't know. It seems completely untenable. Is kind of my know. point. Like, I just yeah, uh, it's yeah. I uh, definitely can see. Uh... I know what I'd say to it. I, I know how to, how I would get the ball rolling on that sort of discussion, but mm. what whatever is it that you uh, so, someone asked didn't him about. didn't Adam champion character arcs? No, he said that he would value at the very least character arcs over consistency. That that was something character that character arcs I feel is well. So this kind is of the contingent. this is the big the reveal rags. This is the value power. Oh power my arc. god! It's this <laughs> where, where you like you know. You know, everyone present your component, and then the the big giant fucking black pill that all of your components are reliant upon my component. None of them work without it. Um, and so you get like, yeah, it's character arcs. And I think I said to him like, all right, so then you know you would prefer a character arc filled film that's inconsistent than a character arcless film that is consistent. He's like, yeah. I was like, well, man, you know, here's TLJ. That's a pretty inconsistent film with character arcs in it. Go nuts. And I'm pretty sure he said, yeah, but those those ones don't like make oh, sense. Shit balls. <gasps> they don't. And it's like, hmm. 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 So, Determine this you have. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure uh when Sitch was talking about like emotional resonance, I was saying, you know, he has assessed it so that the prequels were bad at doing that, right? And that's what like puts them so low down to him. Emotional Problem is, resonance? Like, yeah, like like their ability to sort of they were hilarious. Give, give the audience. What are you talking about? So he pro well, I, I'm actually going to go further <laughs> than that. I think that uh, he's actually wrong that they failed to engage the audience emotionally, even unironically. Like, I think there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people who were moved by the prequels, whether or not yeah, we, we I think agree so. that, you know. So it's not quite. Um, I don't think it works. And, and then I was like, if the whole world was moved by the prequels and said they were incredible in terms of emotional resonance, I would hope that Sitch would maintain that they're not, because he's probably got uh, an assessment based on the content rather than the audience's reaction to it. And I think he agreed. And so, like, the more you poke at that and the more you tear it apart, eventually you'll find, like, he's assessing something within the content. Probably, like, how conducive is the acting and um, the dialogue and uh, maybe the, the tone created by whatever how things are paced, edited, and uh, even scored, you know, like and all these things that we can break up and assess into, into something else. Because I try to avoid even saying whether or not a f it's a film that's good or bad, rather than the writing specifically, if we just 
stick to that one, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would still, like, they asked me what I would define as a story, and we just do the standard, like, an account of a series of events, and uh, it just seems that baked within that definition, or the construction of a story, is cause and effect being the most important boy in there, but it doesn't guarantee in any way, shape, or form that you'll find meaning or even enjoy it. And that seems to be the simplest way to go about it. Though, interestingly, did you know that Sitch thinks the Batman is bad? Really? The Batman? Is it the recent one that came out? Yeah. I was actually quite surprised. He, um, That's surprising. Because, yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. And he said something that he felt about the movie, and he was curious if, we, if it came up for us um, at all, was... Uh, did we realize that if Batman wasn't in the movie, not much at all changes? Um, what does he mean by that? <laughs> uh, I don't think I got to poke it that much further, but I think he was trying to say that, like, the, the vast majority of the main events would be the same had Batman been in the film or not, except for, like, I guess, the ending. The end. Uh, um, I don't know, I haven't really considered it. I told him I, I'd have to rewatch it because I even thought about how things would play out if Batman wasn't there, but... Uh... I guess maybe he's talking about the fact that the story uh, with the Riddler and his thing directly ties into Bruce rather than Batman. I guess so. Or, But uh, I don't know that that means that... I'm not, nothing well, yeah, changes because... without... Yeah, to, for for clarification for anybody in chat, like I'm interested to know whether or not that's true, but that does not in any way define whether or not something's good to me. Like the main character, like if the story could run with the main character not even being there, does that mean the story's bad? It's like that doesn't it could be, could not be. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I would think it would be safe to say that things do play out differently if he's not there. Just him being there necessarily means that things are going to be different. <laughs> yeah. Like, the fact that a good portion of the actual story that they chose to show you doesn't exist anymore, <laughs> you know, yeah. without him. Um, yeah, he was, uh, he was going after the, the penguin chasing quite a bit uh, while mm -hmm. I was there. Um, I think he brought that up yeah, while I mean, he was on with Destiny as well. He, he really doesn't like that scene. <laughs> I but, like I mean, it, but it's could... got problems. Yeah, I wouldn't want to discount the idea that... Because you could have a really cool story about a detective who's trying to solve a murder case, and he just never figures it out. Yeah, like, then that could still never be very compelling. He did it. Yeah. But, but did, the, did he impact the plot? It's like, well, well do you, I guess not the murder plot, but... Do you remember in... Um, who knows what else has happened along the way? Knives line. Out. They thought it was clever that they have um, the detective notice the uh, spot of blood on the maid's shoe really early on. And he manages to just, he, he knows from that point that she knows more than she's letting on, and he's going to try and, like, you know, get that out of her eventually. As opposed to arresting her and interrogating her because she can't fucking lie. Like, mm. She throws up when she's even in the proximity of a lie. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely broken, that stupid movie. <laughs> I was just reminding myself of how, like, he's, one of the, he's such a great detective, but he has no idea if she actually did kill the guy or not. And she has plenty of motive, because he leaves the fucking... The mansion to it, right? The fortune. Because if she did the murder and she knew that the detective was onto her, but for some reason he was just letting her go about her life, <laughs> she was not how. Leave isn't that how it ends? Day. It's like he, because she killed him. Um, technically speaking, with how the events go, she she thought she uh, gave him the lethal dose of uh, whatever, but it wasn't it. Fuck me, I'm trying to remember this film. Wasn't it like it got switched out twice or something? Therefore, something it didn't like get switched yeah. at all, or something. Oh god. Painful, 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 but... Yeah, I just remember that uh, Daniel Craig's character was just like... I, doesn't he say something like, I was sure you were a good person? That's why I just, I just knew it. <laughs> what That's a great detective. You say story. that after a fact, detective. <laughs> yeah, once you figured everything out. It? Well, uh, whatever, anyway. So we're gathered here. It's today. like if it, it's like if um uh who's the famous detective Sherlock Holmes if after if he just like sort of materialized and said ah yes I am really the most incredibly clever detective that ever exists not realizing that <laughs> everything in his stories and in his life was written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to be the way that it was and it couldn't have happened any other way but the character doesn't know it. Well, you're looking forward to Knives Out two and three, aren't you, Rags? No. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, the I second one's coming out this year. How exciting! Oh, wow. It's gonna be so good. Glass Onion, a Knives Out story. Not a great name, but wait, what, is that wait, actually what's it its name? Yeah, Glass Onion, a Knives Out story. That's what it's called. <laughs> All right. I don't know fan. why you wouldn't just call know. it Glass Onion. Um, I would, or, or Knives I'll, Out. I'll, I'll or knives more out Knives too. Out. Or Knives more In. Knives, <laughs> knives Return. More Knives. Knives, knives over there. <laughs> <laughs> or like Knives Out 2, The Cutting Edge. Oh, or, I don't up. know. Knives, knives Down. Knives Down. Knives Down, yeah. Knives With... Up. No Knives. But I don't know. It's spoons. Like, yeah. Spoons <laughs> yeah, Out. Yeah, the same idea. Spoons uh, Out. Spoons well, out. Spoons In, right? Like, just everything is... Well, I guess a spoon isn't the inversion of a knife. Let's just call it's it Spoons. Kind of... uh, what is the inversion of a knife? A spoon's gotta be up there, though. Um, I guess it would be, I don't know what it means for a knife to be inverted other than, I guess, the blade is the handle. Not talking, <laughs> yeah, not like a, talking like opposites, a, a, but... A tool that seals rather than a tool <laughs> that open, you know? Well, like... there's, there's multiple ways to look at it. There's that way, which is, what is the effect that the knife does, and what object reverses that, or does the opposite of it? Or, the construction of a knife, it's known for being very so, sharp, what is a very not sharp thing? Right, like I guess it would be like... Glue, it maybe, like because that makes stuff become not cut anymore. Well, it would still be cut, it's just glued together, actually. It would be like work. a spoon that you rub over wounds and it closes them up. Like, if you, <laughs> if you were to apply that medical glue that they use instead of stitches sometimes, but you right. applied it with a spoon, that would be the opposite of an Or eye. dissolvable stitches, they have those. Like, in a card game, they would totally just negate each other. There'd be no effects other than both cards are destroyed with no effects. So anyway, we're here today to try and do some catching up. We're probably not going to get through everything, but we'll get through a decent chunk. Uh, Especially considering that I just remembered the thing that I was going to talk about. Oh, do you guys yeah. remember? Do you guys remember Galador? No. Oh. Galador was an early attempt at making money back in two thousand and it was like it, the production was like nineteen ninety eight to two thousand one or so. But it was like a Lego thing mm -hmm. uh, that they sort of released alongside Bionicle. And I was just Ooh. curious if you guys remembered Galador. The, the whole thing was you had these figures and you could swap out the arms and legs and heads so that you could like the whole plot or whatever it was, was a, a, a 90s kid who was the protagonist and he could uh, glinch, which was their name of turning one of your limbs into something else that would let you do new things. Like, you could have frog legs and jump high, or you could have plain arms and fly around and things like that. Uh -huh. And I was just watching this video about it, uh, the toy that almost bankrupted Lego. And I was curious <laughs> if anybody else <laughs> remembered Galador, because I do remember Galador. I, that tiny, brief little window in time where it existed. I, yeah, I am so unfamiliar, you could be literally making all of this up, and I just have to believe you. Oh. I'm glad I didn't make it up, and it was somebody else who made it up. Though mm -hmm. I guess conce uh, conceptually, it's not terrible, it's just... They made like a show, and there were video games for it, and the whole toy lines. There was an it was an early ARG thing that they did with it. It was it was a they really wanted to have Galador be a thing, but the people with money out there did not really particularly care about Galador being a thing. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's well. one of those weird toys that you remember from your. Your childhood that just sort of came and went, kind of like scanners, as we've discussed. Oh, it scanners. just came and went, it just came and went. When it should have been on top of the world. It's an interesting idea. I remember being a kid and thinking, "Wow, this is the coolest shit ever." Mm -hmm. I could find barcodes and scan them with little my cool little handheld thing and get monsters and beans. items and stuff. It's like a, it's like a video game, but it's not, but sort of. Well, <laughs> just keep an eye on like Chad. It's like, why does Rags' voice piss me off? Like something about the inflection, <laughs> Kane is just grating. Like, I right. don't know. I think I've got a pretty decent voice. <laughs> I was gonna. Well, if you pulled the That's entire funny. world, I think you're gonna get away more of people approving than disproving. So take that Imagine, yeah, for what you will. I would think so. What I found, I don't know. Rags, we've talked about this many times across all of you, Fat. But it's so weird how many people there are in the world who have like. Because when I, you know, growing up watching Simpsons, Simpsons is made up of stereotypes, and there's a lot of characters in it that'll you're like, all right, that's so exaggerated. Nobody has that voice. 
and I'm specifically talking about, let's say, um, this is more so for Fringy to help me out here, but you have comic book guy, but then you have, like, the the nerd people who are in, like, university. Yeah. I think there's three of them, typically. But yes, they all talk like are. this, and they all have the nasal voice. <laughs> It's like, fuck, recently I've Why seen... Why with that voice coming to your mind I recently? know, exactly, yeah. So <laughs> I've seen a couple of different, just different elements of the internet, different formats, different kinds of responses, discussions, debates and stuff, and man, that voice has been popping up a lot in loads of different people. I'm just Crazy, like, gosh, such an unfortunate I... voice. <laughs> It's it's one of those aspects of how do stereotypes become a thing? Yeah, they're, they're not they don't normally just get randomly arbitrarily invented. They they come from something. Molo, you you have by you've reminded me of. Do you remember when when Homer goes back to university and yes. he's in that lecture and it's like, you know, welcome to nuclear physics one oh one. You know, I I think he says like as they say, out with the old, in with the nucleus, and everybody but Homer laughs. I mean, yeah. He's just like. <laughs> <laughs> all right first of all whoops and drops all of his cue cards and home and just like burst out laughing <laughs> i used to um, i used that laugh oh, in the black widow video down. did you see that jerk <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah. <laughs> they even echo it as it goes to the next scene yeah. Good shit. <laughs> someone said that someone in the chat said that sitch and i sound similar is that true no no i don't hmm. think so. i actually think like you and such a very easy to tell the difference. Um, I think then so again, too, but of course, I only I need an outsider to sort of. Well, there are crazy people who like say like, oh, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between. Um, well, actually, this is a good question for you. Then, do, do you feel this? How much of a similarity do you feel between As and Sargon? Not really at all. I can't detect I a, I a fucking similarity them. at all, but there's loads of people like, yeah. oh, they sound so alike. Yeah, just because like, they're what? British? I guess Is so. that it? Yeah. Because I don't sound the same. You know, I, I, I keep hearing it. Like, I heard it the other day. Someone thought I was Canadian. I don't understand. <laughs> people like, say I'm maybe American. Nice. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. It maybe everybody's just really stupid. That could be it. Except us three. I think you're kind of the 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 accent that you have is not I suppose the first thing people think about when they think British. So maybe they just completely abandon that entirely and they just go someplace else in the world. The thing is, I just it's... thought that people understood the way that things are typically pronounced and like that alone is enough to determine where the accent comes from, but I mean, that's basically seemed... what an accent is. Well, exactly, but it doesn't seem like people I don't understand how someone could think I'm American. I, I don't get it. Like, it's, I, I don't pronounce so, things like an American. Someone said Fringy's not Canadian sounding at all. Canadians are super polite and let others talk. That's the opposite <laughs> of Fringy. What the fuck? I guess that's, that, that's in line with Sitch. He, he, I don't see him interrupting that much on Adam and Sitch. Adam, on the other hand, obnoxious American. <laughs> I, I like both Adam and Sitch's voices. I, I think they're both good voices to listen to. They're I good po agree. podcasting voices. They should make a podcast. Well, I think a comedy they should, show. Yeah, but they should. Yeah, they should make a comedy show on the internet, and they should call it Adam and Sitch <laughs> instead I like of the, Sitch and Adam. Uh, they they occupy such a strange part of the internet in that like they yeah. have all these different network connections, but at the same time, you never see them go on like political panels. They only yeah, do. they're kind right. of over doing their own thing. Yeah. I mean, Maybe to be fair, I, I don't think I would enjoy going on a political I would panel. neither. <laughs> no, oh, neither would I. That. Pretty Fuck painful. That. If there was a, yeah, like, you guys do media yeah. paddles or something, I, was like, I feel like we don't well, even so, do paddles. We do... I don't even know what you... You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't feel like we, we do that. We get in the call and we talk. Yeah. We don't I guess, do um, panels. We're not this, so professional. The, this is kind of funny because I think that EFAP is a format that works well, which is kind of like a panel. But I think that if you're going to have a conversation about something like politics, it's one on one is preferable. Because, like, one of the most annoying things about watching a political panel is when two people are having a conversation that's going somewhere, and then this one jerk wants to <laughs> jump in with some total tangent that derails the whole thing, and then that conversation never gets resolved. Well, yeah, it's and that's kind of. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. That's why I've always yeah. found it funny when it's like the EFAB debates, you know, they're, they're, they're non productive, toxic, crazy bubble. I'm just always just like, bro, fucking. Show me the debate. I think that it well, is well, show show yeah. me the debate politically that ends with one side going, you know what? You are absolutely right. <laughs> well that's that's the big problem with a political panel, isn't it? Is it's just like 
I, I don't. Nobody's on there to change anybody's mind or to have their minds changed. Not yet, rather. Yeah. They're usually there's um, there to be like, I'll fight for my side. Your side sucks. Yeah, and then and there's there's no attempt to actually reach a middle ground because I don't know how many good faith people there really are talking about like I don't know the politics on the internet. <laughs> They're out there. They're out there somewhere lurking in the forest, you know, <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a weird choice, but you know, no judging. And um, the fact that they're lurking, they're not hanging out in the forest, they're lurking. Mm -hmm. It's an important distinction. Yeah, this is why de even debating movies, you know, even that, you're just not gonna, sometimes you just don't make ground, which is okay, actually. Everyone's yeah, allowed. it's fine. It's, it happens. It's all right. We haven't um, had a movie debate in a long time. Maybe episode 200 we will, uh, will remedy that. Not that we would even want we to do that, but, you know... <laughs> Yeah, Maybe. we need to. We need to. Re, we need to what, find um, ourselves something to discuss or debate. Not that you know the answer to this off the top of your head, but I assume, Fringy, you might. Uh, what would be out around about the time of the twenty seventh, or before? Uh, the twenty seventh of August. Yeah. Anything? Uh, notable? I have no idea. Is Andor's first I episode out by then, or no? I think it is. I think She Hulk comes out like a week ahead of that. Oh, She-Hulk, I forgot that. I, I was thinking of movies, not, like, TV shows. Oh, well, shows. obviously, we talk about TV yeah. here, too. It's all good. Mm. I can look up upcoming movie releases. Uh, I think we've moved past all of the big, like, summer blockbusters, so it's sort of the in-between, mm -hmm. you know, until, uh, like, November, December. I'm looking at some of these. We've got... What it, don't worry, darling. Wakanda Forever. That'll be great. Wait, Black Adam. One of those two. Oh, right? yeah. That's Black Adam's in like October, I think. Was yeah. The Avatar. The League yeah, of December. Super Pets. Quantum Mania. Oh, yeah, but that's 2023. That's yeah, right. So we're aiming for August. Where are you going? August. When, is, when does The Woman King come out? I don't know. I'm just looking at a big poster sheet that has all the things. All right, right. Oh, well, that doesn't... So, really, it's just... Oh, I recognize that movie. Let me use my brain to figure out the release date. Someone said, yeah, there's an awesome Boots movie. Wakanda Forever. I can't wait for more to be called racist again. Hey, that's if I see that movie. I don't even know if I will. I don't think I want to. I don't, I, I don't I, particularly I, care about that one. It's um, hard to decide what I'm, what I'm eating at the Marvel buffet these days, you know? It's like, hmm. Well, what what yeah. thing is worth time? I don't know. Let's see, you've got, so it's the, for August the 27th, you said? Yeah, that's the plan. A month from um, today, So, I found a list, and I'm looking through here that has some times on it and general release dates, and there's nothing really around the 27th that I know about, or really, no, uh, Beast? A father and his two teenage daughters find themselves hunted by a massive rogue lion intent on proving that the savannah has but one apex predator starring Idris Elba. When is, uh, when is, uh, when's that's Prey cool. coming out? That sounds like it could be cool. It could be. Uh, let me out? control F Prey. We have Prey for the Devil. No, Prey, the Predator. Uh, also, wait, P R E Y. Prey. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, yeah, I know. That's how the Prey for the Devil is spelled. That's how oh, clever right, it is. Right. Nice. Pray for the devil. A nun prepares to perform an exorcism and comes face to face with a demonic force with mysterious ties to her past. Neat. Pray for the devil. It wants in this Halloween. Yeah, but like we're no closer to figuring out when pray's coming out. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Of course. Let me see. Pray movie. Let me click on this. It's a two, 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 two. August 5th, 2022. Okay, so that's not oh, really that here. much closer to now than then. That's uh, coming out streaming straight we're away, watching right? that. I think so, yeah. If that's I the case... I presume we're watching that. Yeah, as long as you guys are on board, I would not mind checking that out and maybe doing an episode yeah, for it. Yeah, we can take a look at it. Yeah, yeah. we can um, take a look. That is the yeah, newest attempt at destroying good, uh, Predator. Apparently it got a good response at Comic-Con, where I think it premiered. Hmm. But, I, you know... <laughs> Suspicious <laughs> face. Kind of. We shall see. Yeah, I just don't know what that means. 
Well, Do we right. want to uh, do super chats? <laughs> you say that like I'm not interested in just having discussions with you. I'm sorry. I, I do yeah, like I you. Being all right. Here. I'm I gonna be, admit it. Being, here. being honest. Here's, it's all come out. I don't just talk to you guys to answer messages people send in. There are other reasons. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway, we'll go with uh, Streamlabs first. We'll try and catch right up. Please go back to the uh, the twenty eighth of the sixth, like a month what? ago. Uh, okay. I like how you can now infer from Obi Wan's show that Baru and Owen were incinerated because they pulled guns on the stormtroopers that showed up at their home, which means the stormtrooper killing them in self defense is a possibility in canon now. Oh my god, you're actually right. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Excuse me. That's we would like to, to enter your. Like... They just shoot them. They're like, oh god. <laughs> hey, we, uh, it's like, hey, we saw your left tail lights out. Oh god, bullets! <laughs> Take them out, drop it a grenade. That is a legitimately. <laughs> now that we've established their characters. Yeah. <laughs> Ultra. Ultra mega stand your ground libertarian crazy types. <laughs> Throw cops on our farm. Shoot first. Ask questions later. Today's a good day to die, Baru. <laughs> oh <know>? God. <laughs> All right, so we got what about Luke? He'll be fine. He's with the old man. We got four scenarios here. Uh, which would be most shocking? So Joe okay. Biden pops onto Metal's forge. Hassan and Ethan Klein guest star on Friday Night Tights. Movie Bob, Wings of Redemption, and Boogie get in a three-way MMA fight. And then Donald Trump goes on EFAP to talk about a media of, of our choice. Which is the most shocking of these I mean, four. it's, it's the gonna be the Joe Biden or Trump ones. <laughs> um, so, the first one is Joe Biden goes to... Also, fun no, Ford. Yeah, funnily enough, I think number two should be knocked out. Hassan and Ethan going on Friday Night Tights is a possibility, I actually think, compared to the rest that of them. That is a possibility. Like, I could see that. them doing it to be like, yeah, we'll own them, it'll be great. Like, that could happen. The other three, I Probably. think, will never happen, but, you know. So Joe, actually, the, what was the third one who was fighting? Uh, Movie Bob, Wings uh, of Redemption, and Boogie. I can see that happening. That's, I think that's number two in terms of likelihood. Yeah. I would, I would, yeah, I, I think I could actually envision a world where they, they are all just so sad and desperate. Wings and Boogie, yes. I don't think Movie Bob yeah, would agree. Yeah, Movie Bob, Movie Bob would have to, he'd have to lot. get to a particular special low in order to do that. Um, he would be the one you'd have to really work hard to get on board. Uh, because if you, if you just went to Boogie or Wings and said, hey, we're going to give you just like food and if will you do this they'll probably say yeah but movie bob mm. he thinks very very highly of himself to a fault and so then we're gonna have to yeah. joe biden go on metal stream or trump on our stream i feel like the more likely of those two is probably trump on our stream trump because on our stream is more likely i think yeah biden i just don't see at least trump could try and promote something here but like if if biden goes on metal's stream as a like wouldn't he go on a different stream i would say the same for trump going on ours but you know I think, I think that's the order. You never know. You never know. You if never Trump know. likes you, he, he might come to your stream or that's whatever. That's true. Who knows? He, just, he, he strikes me as that kind of person. Um, but yeah, I feel like Biden is too busy trying to be president. Oh, yeah. If they He's said... He's globetrotting and... You know. They said Movie Bob can go to Mars if he does the MMA fight. He'd do it, right? Ooh, yeah. Oh, Luke right, because he really wants to go to Mars, right? Really does. If you yeah. have Elon Musk or whoever, tell him that, okay, if you do this fight, we promise we're going to put you in like a we'll Christmas We'll send you to Mars, and, and you're going you're gonna to love it we're there gonna... with all of that well, incredibly radioactive no, no, stuff. No, 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 <laughs> you, you got it long term, right? Movie Bob is a visionary. We're going to put you in a crypto sleep casket. We're going to put you in stasis, right? And we're going to suspend your body in animation for a hundred years so that you know, when Mars is starting to get, you know, something like that, right? So that one day you can emerge as the, the glorious new Ubermensch that you think that you are in this brand new world where there are no Republicans and um, it, it's, it's great. It's Movie Bob's paradise. He, 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 he could go for that, right? And he's like, I'm too good for this world as it is. He clearly thinks he is too good for this world. Well, if you remember, part <laughs> of his frustration was the we would not only be on Mars, but there would be robot bodies for us all by then. So, right. If he arrived I, on I Mars, he's like, he is, "Where's my robot body?" Yeah. And they're like, "We, we don't even, dude." Yeah, Bob, no, no, no. <laughs> you, you have to exercise and eat well. That, that's. He's like, "No, madness. Where's my robot body?" 
What would specifically be the appeal of going to Mars and being a robot? I think <laughs> like, it just what? it's just his idea of we've we've done it, you know, we've made it. If if we've got we've, those two we, things, we're living Someone, the dream. We're robots on Mars. Yeah. Someone said uh, you want to make Movie Bob as a cryptocurrency rags or put him into cryo sleep. Is like no no no. I said crypto sleep casket, which is an item from RimWorld that suspends you in animation. It's a self powered sarcophagus that. Just kind of freezes you in place. Neat. Um, but there is a what's the what's the prefix? You carry on while I look up the prefix. That C R Y P T O. Okay. Uh, dear Mall Lord, if I may ask you to please to please your viewer by doing a visible opinion guest or quest about Stranger Things season four on Mauler channel. Kind regards, our late metal Lord Eddie deserve it, I presume. A visible opinion quest. Do they just mean a me talking about it? visible opinion quest. This is before I think I did that stream, but I ended up doing one, so hopefully that was what you were looking for. Also, hi rags. Hello. And emu kisses for Fringy. Okay. <laughs> just a little... M -m 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 -m. Emo kisses, <laughs> emu, emu kiss, not emo kisses. You don't want those. Emu kisses would be. They'd have to be like light, like almost. They would, tiny, otherwise gentle, they'd sort of gentle stab pecs. You yeah. A little bit. By the way, crypto is a prefix uh, meaning hidden or secret. Mm. Uh, so, like cryptocurrency is like a like a secret kind of money you have, and uh, crypto oh, cryptography is like a secret writing. You know that sort of thing. And a crypt. And a crypt is just I. Where is it? I don't know. Nobody it's, knows. It, it's hidden. It's secret. I, I, I don't know. Hey, Mola. I wondered what you and your friends think about Ori and the Will of the Wisp. I'm asking because there's a thread named "Spoiler." I kind of hate the ending on Steam forums that unfairly deems the game bad. I am hoping you can look into it. Well, I liked it a whole bunch. I like the first answer. I like it. Too. It's really mm. cool little series. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a beautiful, it, probably one of your submissions if someone was like, video games aren't uh, art, you'd be like, ha, gotcha. Yeah, I got this game for you, buddy. Because when they play something like Tetris, they're like, yeah, it's not, and you're like, ugh, you're a bad person, <laughs> but let me try this, see if this works. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I think very good game. I think on release wasn't the only problem with Will of the Wisp, was, uh, there was some bugs, is that about it? I think so. Hmm. So there you go. Uh, thank you, my lord, Molhire, Mole, for this one with Nerdrotic and for the previous clever, brilliant, and calm appearance with the colonial descendants beyond the pond on Nina Infinity. They are talking about me just talking about Stranger Things. I'm following. Uh, that was so good. Hail Fringy, kisses for rags. Hmm. Oh, hi. Right. Emu kisses for me. Hmm. Mm. I figured out why Fringy has liver failure. Fringy, you have to actually eat the banana, not just stick it in your gob and slap a green mask over it. I, there is no banana there. Oh, he didn't deny the liver failure this time. That would time, be though. great, though, to have a... It would be good for you to put in there, like, at the beginning of the day, you just slip in a banana, and then all through the day, you just have, like, a little snack, and you eat it piece by piece by piece. And as you eat it, you can just tilt your head back, and a little bit more slides down. You just take a bite. You know, move your head forward and it goes back into place. It's like a little, little, it's, ooh, it's crypto rations is what mm. it is. A little, little hidden banana, a little fringy secret banana. Because yeah, nobody really knows what's going on in there, you know? Yeah, that, that would be really useful. Some uh, survival rations there. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Jane Foster, if you lose this children's card game, the souls of these children will be sent to the Shadow Realm. Also, we'll be playing while riding motorcycles. Don't know... Try a Yu-Gi-Oh episode, right? They're trying to make like an analogy, like it's just a crazy show. It's very strange and unusual. I see. They do very ludicrous things with uh, maybe the, the the stakes are extremely, you know, intense for how the show is you know marketed and portrayed to kids or something. Uh, props to you guys for keeping true to your standards in writing as more mind-numbing sludge continues to spew from Hollywood. Keep it up. Watching EFAB has taught me a lot on being critical with media while also providing plenty of good laughs. Hey, that's nice. Thanks. 
That is nice. Um, I'm really glad you like it. Well, hey, the MCU is is totally ready to bring out just the most mediocre thing ever, and we'd be like, whoa, and we talk forever about how amazing yeah, that is because of that. Damn, so. like, and all that Ant Man, like that would be swell. They've set the stage right now. It is like as low as we think it can go. <laughs> like a zero point five out of ten. I, I told feel you, like I thought this was the the sludge. I don't want this to be the build up. It was it was like a a ground level thing, and then like the next movie crashed out and just made a dent. And we looked down, and there was like this hole of the floor beneath the floor. We were like, no, <laughs> like that's no, come on, no come way. On, it's is... like this one's the bedrock. Okay, and you're like, all right. That's to be fair. fair. One thing we get to look forward to in the next phase of the MCU, we get to look forward to how little our investment will be because all the things we care about are just gone now. That'll be kind of interesting. Yeah. Funny it's... as well, just thinking about how, like, DC got completely overshadowed as well. They had, like, the Shazam and Black Adam stuff, but nobody cares, really. Yeah, we can, we but... can mention those as well. <laughs> if yeah. people want to know what we yeah. think about those. I don't know, man. Like, they seem to think Black Adam is going to be this really, like, cool and interesting big project, but I don't know. I'm just not... <laughs> what is, really what is Black Adam's power? Black Adam has the same powers as uh, Shazam. He's basically, like, his arch nemesis. Shazam! Um, but, um, he's, like, kind of, uh... Well, he's a villain, but I think they're trying to nudge him more so to be, like, anti-hero. Um, okay. and they seem to think that that's, like, a really cool gimmick, but it's not that, like, it's not really. It's just very normal. Um, like, there's nothing unique about a, a superhero film with an anti-hero as the lead. Like, that's what Deadpool was, like, six years ago, you know? Oh, and Venom, <laughs> as well. And, and Morpheus. <laughs> so, you know... Those ones trailblaze, they could walk so that Black Adam could run. Yeah. yeah. Somebody I mean, I would much... I'd just rather see a Doctor Fate movie, like, in, just with him as the lead. Especially with Pierce Brosnan, than... it's nice to see him doing stuff. Yeah, it is. Um, I, I yeah, like, I, I guess you look at DC, it's like, what is your plan? Like, compared to, I mean, I don't know that Marvel plan. has, like, a really good plan at all but like it seems like dc has no plan marvel's plan is keep making terrible movies yeah uh, i guess at least they have like a level of direction and consistency with dc it's like so what do you what's like what's your what's I, your uh, I, your end game here you know like what do you what do you want to i guess yeah marvel sort of has i wonder how long it'll take until it just totally falls apart because it's just not an mcu really Everything, well, everyone wants to do their own thing. It, it, only in the barest it, way is it a, in a united universe. It's, well, I mean, I don't even know what that looks like now, because The Flash is meant to be their reset film, and that film is, like, going to probably be a catastrophe now, like, in terms of what are you meant to do with this film? Like, what do you do with it? How do you uh, establish things that you can run forward with when, like, the main character... The, is is like what do you, what are you meant to do? You know, like how do you move forward with that project? That's got to be. Imagine just being the guys making that film, and you pick up the newspaper in the morning, and you're like, "What the yeah. fuck?" <laughs> yeah, like you just you've lost your lead. Um, in yeah. your reset of the universe movie, like that's you guys course, wanted a reset. Aqu Here you go. Catastrophe. Aquaman as Aquaman as well. <laughs> of course, you got all that baggage too. So like yep. yeah I don't know I don't know what that I don't know what that series looks like maybe meanwhile Batman the Batman is nice and safe in its own little corner it's just like yeah it cozy is. cozily hanging out same for it's Joker like, yeah, it's nice over here yeah yeah exactly it's the same with Joker what did Joker score with us was it a nine I think it was an eight wasn't it was it, or... it was really high up there I can't remember the exact number it feels so. shockingly <laughs> high considering everything else now <laughs> like yeah. mm -hmm. Does yeah. like like eights? Do those exist? Are those real? <laughs> this is the legends. I've only read about them in books. And movies, the ancient <laughs> tomes. <laughs> they speak of a cinema that could get up to even a seven out of ten. Be a lies on uh, real BBC. Gary was like, "Oh yeah, how many references were there to the blip in Thor: Love and Thunder again?" It's like, "Yep, uh, we ain't doing mm. that." And. Uh, of course, I, I mean, fuck. I guess you could count, like, infinity cones, which is like, Jesus Christ. But, um, 
you know, he reckons that once they're done with this cycle uh, for Phase 5, that those Avengers movies will end with a reset, because uh, even they will have a limit on how much they think they can tangle everything up before they're like, uh oh, things just things just aren't making any fucking sense anymore, like, in any way, shape, it's or form. Too many, hmm. too many people wanting to tell all of their own stories that all have to be the most titanic, large-scale, end-of-the-universe, mm -hmm. most powerful thing ever, actually the real supervillain all along, blah, 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 blah. And that's it. That's what it is. Too many people. That's yep. why it feels so... If you kind said, okay, fun, every right? movie has to be like Homecoming, then it's easy to make a cinematic universe around that. Well... For them. You look to you <laughs> look to the future, though. It's like the only upcoming project on that list that seems viable to be low stakes is the Daredevil reboot show. And somehow they'll fuck that up, like in terms of stakes. I, we I know mean, they'll fuck it up anyway, like, but you know. God damn, I'm so nervous about that one. You're gonna be watching uh, that one intently, then, I don't know. I probably will. Yeah, I probably will be. I mean, I'll probably like watch She Hulk to see hit Daredevil in it. Like, I don't. You know what I mean? Like, the go, level of scrutiny on this Daredevil show is going to be that of, like, the first scene, if they get it wrong, there'll be, like, hundreds of people writing essays prep. <laughs> like, you have I fucked mean, this up. I'm just, I'm curious if they're going to go for, like, a, a rating for that show, or whatever the television equivalent is, like, pushing it further. You know, like, I, I wonder if they're going to have the balls to, like, actually, you know, explore all the facets of that character. Because they're not... Like, he's not a safe character, I would say, Daredevil, compared to, like, other comic book characters. There's a lot of, um... Yeah, I don't know. I just don't trust him. I, uh, I get really nervous thinking about what they're gonna do with Daredevil. They're gonna have to turn him into the unequivocal, absolutely good hero who is the well, most... Sure. Like, it's... I mean, I, uh... safe? I, I'm, I wonder what the nature of having this character be, like, integrated into the Marvel Cinematic Universe looks like. Because, like, in the Marvel Comics world, there's enough of a... There's enough of, like, a, um, a way to sort of almost have him have his, like, low-stakes stories in this world, and that's, that's chill, but I don't know, like, that Marvel does that. Because they'll want him to appear in, like, the big crossover stuff. Um, and how are you going to justify that, you know? Like, in that... I, I, I don't know. I... 18 episodes as well. That's a lot of lot of episodes compared to like any other show. Maybe maybe that's maybe is that a good sign? <laughs> I don't know. No. That's more I mean uh, nowadays, just the more episodes, the more opportunity there is. I, well, the reason why I say that is because I think that like all of these shows have suffered pretty tremendously under the weight of being like very short. It's like you don't have enough time to logically and gradually build up your stakes. I mean, I like agree, but like they also don't even have the content to fill the episode counter they have. Usually, that's true. Yeah, that's the double hit. True. Yeah, but I mean, Daredevil managed to make thirteen episodes. A well, season. Cool. we, we, yeah. we, you and I, especially, for we've watched fucking you know, shit shows, tons of TV no, that fill yeah. fill twenty four episodes of hour long content. Like that's a thing they used to do. They don't well, do it anymore. I guess the thing is, is um. I don't, someone in the chat mentioned, but like, Punisher definitely won't be making an appearance. It's like, I think they want Punisher. I think Marvel wants Punisher. They want I him th I think they his want own, it. maybe? Um, no, oh, they, like they'd probably want to, they'd want him to appear in that show before, and just be doing what Netflix did, right? D it, Punisher appears in Daredevil before getting a Punisher show. I'm sure that they would, they would want, because that's like money making, right? Like they've, that's, that's a, that's a profitable IP. As opposed to, I guess, like, is Luke Cage or Iron Fist going to make a comeback? I don't know about that. Hmm. Or even Jessica Jones, who knows? We'll see. Yeah, it's just like... Going to build things slowly. The, reason... the safest choice was Daredevil. They've got him. They're going to do it. We'll see. Wow. The reason why Daredevil was back is because we all wanted him back, and it feels like it's a bit of a monkey's paw. It's like, yeah, he's back. <laughs> it's like... This, seriously, you, oh, can, yeah. you can trace this conversation back, like, three years in EFAP. We, we, we we're like, hmm... Hmm, I don't know. Well, I think if you had told me three years ago that there was going to be more Daredevil and that he'd be, like, properly integrated into the MCU, that would have made me happy. Now that I hear it, it's like, ooh. Yeah, because there's I not... Guess... At least back in 2019, we may have been like, yeah, there's still portions of the MCU that are functional that he can sit in, but right now he's running exactly. out of space that's not in destroyed. A sense, in a sense, it's actually kind of a good thing that um they seem to be... The implication seems to be that it's going to be like a soft reboot, 
So in a sense, you can treat the, the, the original series as its own thing that can't be damaged, which is nice. Um, but nevertheless, right, like, it's still gonna be bringing all... I guess I'm happy that the actors like Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio still get to do the work and play the characters and yeah. maybe get broader recognition. That makes me happy. Um, but as for the show itself, I'm super nervous about what they're gonna do. Well, yeah, because, you know, fundamentally, why, why is it that people are asking for Daredevil to come back, but nobody's asking for Iron Fist to come back? It's like, it's fucking writing, obviously. It's writing, yeah. Um, as well, along with the performance as well. I'm sure that, um, I forget the name of the actor, but I'm sure he would have been fine as, uh, Iron Fist, if, you know. Oh, uh, Finn Jones. Yeah, I think so. I don't, I don't even really have a, because I've watched, I watched all of Iron Fist. <laughs> I watched both seasons. Um, he was fine. Um, the writing was pretty shit. Mm -hmm. Uh, though admittedly, compared to, like, what we're getting now, Iron Fist probably isn't that bad compared to, like, uh, I don't know if I want to say that. It wasn't good. Um, I think pretty much all the other ones except for Daredevil had some serious writing problems. Um, yeah, but I mean, now, I don't know. How well would it stack up compared to Loki? Probably okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll try and um, set a whole series of subjects to go yeah. through on Saturday. We'll cover all these things. We'll, we'll, it'll likely be me and bring explaining to Rags what, what these things will be and whether or not we'll even mm -hmm. care about them. <laughs> it's like it's it's so enormous at this point, you know? Like the network yeah, of like, Marvel content. Like fifteen things every I and I guess we will talk about it then, but it's kind of funny that phase four has been chopped like short and what used to be yeah. part of that phase has now been shifted over to like, ah, now it's phase five, guys. We're in a new phase. This this saga makes total sense. There's a clear direction here. Oh yeah, there are <laughs> clear borders for, uh, for phase four. I mean, you can see them. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, totally. You know, in, in much the same way that there were logical breaks in the first three phases based on the Avengers movies, now it's, it's Black Panther as a break, and then I think like blade or like thunder bolts what what is it thunder what's I'm that not... thunderbolt right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm already annoyed at that because the description of thunderbolts that i saw was just like which is probably accurate to the oh, comics which is the, it'll be zemo the it'll team be of villains yeah. doing blah blah, blah. And, and, and i'm like isn't 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 Walker supposed to be in the Thunderbolts? Yeah, Walker. I he's think not Elena's a fucking villain, as they've characterized him in Falcon Winter Soldier. Uh, he's not just yeah. like. So I'm gonna. I, he's I'm already... actually pretty darn good. He's one of the people he's I really like. <laughs> he's one of the few people I like that are left. Guardian Three, man. Okay, that's what I'm still in it. Yeah, for. that and Spooderman. We've said for a while, like we can hang on to them. Anyway, um. The flag of the day is Sicily. Please put flag on screen. Why? <laughs> Please put flag on screen. You're not the boss of the stream. Only if well, uh... I guess I'll take a look. Oh, we've we've we, we've looked at this. I'll I'll show you. It's the it's it's a good one. This is a this is a quality flag. Let me get a good picture. These are at different uh Flag of Sicily. Here we go. This is why they wanted me to put it on screen, huh? It's very strange. <laughs> it's so <laughs> odd. Beautiful flag. Just Look got these there. porcupines Hello. too. Those oh what? wait, they're not porcupines. I th I thought they were porcupines when there was no color. It's not. Um, it's wheat. Some, some people are noticing my avatar, which is. Very good. I, I would imagine that the fun we had on that pretty much guarantees we'll be playing Gartophone in episode 200. So, Absolutely. Uh, it's so that. good. We had such a good time. It was so many, Do you know what fucking Duma said to me, that crazy man? He was like, oh, that, that game's real that great, real too. great, but you guys should check out some of the other Jackbox games. I find, like, one of the best ones is Quiplash. And I was like, I, fucking Quiplash? Did you guys ever play that? That's a name I that I haven't it. heard in a long, long time. Oh, the funniness and, and the engagement of Quiplash dies after, like, one game forever. It's, uh... Well, that's, like, all Jackbox games. They're a lot very, of them. Like, very few of them. 
Like I, maybe TKO was kind of fun, and then TKO Champed was up, good. Champed up was really really strong. I think compared to a lot of them. Those are the, but they're they're all about drawing. To be fair, I think it's worth mentioning the differences being the because like Champed up's unique thing of like, you know, I send you the man with <laughs> yeah. no face as an enemy, and then you have to be, you make like the man with face killing guy, like all you know, just so dumb. Yeah, that, you make a champion, and someone else has to make a champion that can beat them. Yeah, you know, which is um, just sounds funny that everyone votes for who would win the fight. Like that, that shit's great as an idea. I, I'd like to play that again, uh, to, to mix it up. But Gardic Phone just, whoa, too it's good. so consistently, reliably hilarious. Yeah, shot an onion. Yeah, it's a great, great game. Sometimes I wonder when when we pick uh, the knockoff one, where I'm like, will it be funny? And then it comes through as like funny as fuck because. You know the the rushing on the time. I almost wish that the the faster rounds lasted a bit longer on the knockoff ones because they get really funny. Like the Homer Simpson turning into what was like a flesh duck or something. It looked horrifying. It was just it looked a bit phallic with a face, honestly, in a blue ocean, like a worm. Oh, remember Galathar was from uh, Champ Galathar. Dub. Yeah, he was like the a flesh. Of... Was it the Skin Eater? Yes, <laughs> something like Galathar, that. Galathar, the Skin Eater. <laughs> I'm like, oh man. Yeah, we should play that again sometime. Uh, hey, it seems like the the Act Man Quantum TV drama seems to be over. What are your thoughts? Um, uh, I guess Act Man got remonetized, which is very, very, very good news. Because yeah. if he didn't, that would be just one of the most flagrant YouTube "What the fuck are you doing?" kinds of things. Um, I don't know, but. They were it's so insane. certain to, that they were taking him seriously about his threats, okay? He wasn't doing it tongue-in-cheek at all. We should all no. go down for any sarcasm. But, um, yeah. Good you made a joke that we didn't understand. Your income <laughs> is... is forfeit. <laughs> oh, all, the, this, then the, the actual things that other guy did? No, nah, fuck it. No, don't worry about that. Well, yeah, because that. I saw, like, attacks on uh, Ackman being like, yeah, well, you shouldn't have joked about that if you didn't want that repercussion. It's like, please, look back at anybody's history, and there's going to be something you should not have fucking said there, even as a joke, quote-unquote, if they came for you. It's just like, we all expect a some level of understanding of sarcasm. Jesus. Oh, well. But hence why we are trying to be careful, more careful and more careful every single day. I was talking to a friend about this. He was he was lamenting over the loss of the Wild West of the internet, and I was like, dude, you say that, ten years from now we'll be lamenting the loss of the current Wild West of the internet. Like, what we have right now is probably going to be Remember restricted way harder. Remember when you could call harder. people stupid? <laughs> Not anymore. Remember when you could just converse with other human beings instead of AI-generated robots That's in right. your, your internet cell that you're not allowed to leave? Remember when you could just jump in a call instead of signing contracts before we do that? Remember those days? Gosh. But you know, this is the mild west. Yeah, enjoy it while it lasts for as long as it will. Uh, Natalie Pootman. Alright. That's your fetish, not ours. Lord Long of Mubslington. Is there any good chance of a fap when there's much going on? It would be a fap. Yeah, sure. Well, we'll have a fap. <laughs> <laughs> do it. We'll do that. That, that does sound great. exciting. I occasionally hummed the Avengers theme transitioning into the Batwoman theme ever since you did minis on Batwoman. It didn't hit me until much later how fitting it is given the current state of Marvel movies. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> I also felt that about the, uh, I know, I know it's not even really fair because the Avengers theme, they knew they'd be using it a lot and it's really important stuff, but like, you know the theme they used for like the, the Illuminati people? Like, no, almost I like, can't actually remember. It's, it's hard for me to even... All I was going to say was just I remember being so lame and generic. It's like, I guess that's just, you know, whatever, right? I because wish that movie was lame and generic. I was about to say, actually, yeah, that would be better. But that, that, the score for, like, I don't even know what they would call it. The Illuminati theme. I genuinely still have no idea exactly if the world believes they were supposed to be portrayed as fascist idiots or if they were supposed to be portrayed as heroes They were just really badly done. Like, some people defend it that way. They're like, yeah, 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 they were supposed to be, like, the kind of bad guys, the Illuminati. It's like, are they? I don't think they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think the film is portraying them as bad guys at all. Pretty it's supposed good guys. to be almost like, no, yeah, it's totally right that they want to just annihilate Doctor Strange. It's very reasonable that they want to do that, considering the stakes that we wrote that we don't think about after this scene. I do love 
how dumb that is. It's like, either him being here can destroy your whole universe, and so we should all just agree to get rid of him right now. It's not even worth the risk of having him walk around here if he can destroy it all by doing that. Or, you're not worried about that, and you're just worried that he might do evil things at some point, maybe. In which case, you might not want to kill people for that, because, uh... Yeah, considering who you are, <laughs> maybe click on the... The thing is, you know, of course, there's no, like, how else do they do it, right? Like, how else do they solve it? It's not like they have anybody who could just, like, read a mind and know a person that way. If they did, that would make things a lot easier. Like, I'm thinking some kind of old dude. Maybe he he's so mind-powerful that he can't even walk, because that's just how he works. Conceptualizing something here. Someone who looks like Patrick Stewart, maybe, in a little go-kart. A yellow, floaty go-kart. Have you guys seen that clip where he, he like rides it around the whole room on a rail? Good shit. <laughs> <laughs> like they, any change to that, they make the film better. Okay. Um. <laughs> this Sonic man, this Sonic stuff is incredible. One secondo. <laughs> You gotta put it on stream, you have to. Oh, yeah. The medical's on Sonic, honey. <laughs> that is uh, the incredible <laughs> Sonic that I drew on Gothic Phone, brought to a more realistic light. Some people think he's ugly, I think he's different, that's all. <laughs> I, got, I got the hair right, didn't I? Jeez. <laughs> The hair is spot on, yeah. <laughs> Chad Sonic. That's the thing with knockoff. You just it makes sense you just want to start with like a well known character design so that you can just see how it all turns out. What happens in Gothic Phone, yeah. Well, you know what? You you don't get to know if you don't watch them. Some people are like, ooh, I don't want to watch EFAP gaming. It's like, well, that's your fault then. Metallica's Ride the Lightning needed to be the base for this movie. The idea of Jane using Thor's power being a death sentence and the God Butcher role being a curse. Ride the Lightning and for whom the bell tolls were criminally underused. You Stop pretending like they gave a shit. I'm sorry, okay? You don't want to have those songs. You don't want to have songs you like associated with this stuff. They did have songs we like associated with. They just threw them in randomly. Not That's more. the problem. No, you know, like... <laughs> What I'm getting at is, like, this person's highlighting, like, you know, thematically this would be applicable, and then it's like, they didn't go that far. Trust me. I think uh, all the sort of production-y, behind-the-scenes-y, promotional-y stuff with Ica really took me from a position of, like, how did this movie happen to... Oh. Well, there it is. Unfortunate, and... Uh... I hope more people in the MCU production line are more passionate, but unfortunately the passionate people are probably the ones who are getting crushed down by, like, um, you know, CGI and stuff. Meanwhile, the ones that literally, like, helming projects are like, well, whatever! Um... Thor should be rebuilding Asgard and taking care of Jane. The first movie says he could use his power to build. He could even build statues of loved ones. Lost contrasting with other gods with statues of themselves. This could test Gore when he sees them. There were way better ways to do it. Of every idea Many that that film has. Just like, that whole film concepts, like all of them were squandered entirely. Like we said, um, you get Gore's establishing scene. They justify why he hates his god. Second later, I hate all gods. It's like, oh. They all must die. I not, I not just jump. hate them. I hate them so much, I'm going to devote my life to killing them. But, like, even that one, I guess I could allow. Until they're like, he turns up at Asgard. He's going to bait out the gods by threatening their people. It's like, that's totally opposite from what you, we thought you were as a person. I'm so confused already. And it's crazy because um, the one thing I did see that was quite commonly said about Thor, Love and Thunder was, you know, gore. And this is this is aside from the acting, so I think we all agree on that. Um, just the characterization, he's the best villain in Phase 4 easily. And I was like, fuck me, I don't even... Who is the best villain in Phase 4? Zemo? Yeah, I think. Well, Zemo... Like, does Vulture Zemo... Oh, I guess if we... 
Luke, yeah, phase four because of just... Falcon the Winter Soldier and not because of, you know. Uh, I guess, yeah. Zemo, we, we got lucky with Zemo. Oh, a lot of people are saying Green Goblin. That's a good point, yeah. That's Ooh, so Green fucking Goblin's funny good. that if our two picks are things from <laughs> things that aren't even original, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, if we're if we're limiting it to orig if we are limiting it to original characters from Phase Four, like their first sort of outing in Phase Four, who is the best villain? Um, we got Drakov, uh, right? He was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, got Kang. Uh, oh well, I've got a um. We've got the Mandarin. No, oh, we yeah. have Ooh. great Agatha Harkness. Oh, top notch! Excellent. Oh, I guess Wanda would be one of the ones as well, wouldn't she? Yeah, uh, Carly Morgenthau. Oh, she was so good. Oh, the Eternals. Irish Gem. Yeah, uh, yeah, that would be that would be Eternals. Um, hmm. We have uh, we have Arthur. Who that? Oh, Arthur fuck, Harrow? of course, Moon Knight, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Moon Knight. The one who couldn't answer basic questions about his motivation. A lot of them have that uh, problem. Of course we have, of course we have yeah. Wanda, there's General Drakov, <laughs> uh, Kingpin? Yeah, but we won't count him. Strange, uh, he destroyed a whole universe. Someone said Kevin Feige, yeah, that could count. Yeah, um... Also, yeah, anyone who's saying Walker in chat, I said villains. You said villains, not hero chads <laughs> that I want to see do well. Because Eternals existed, so was the MCU, but that's fine. All oh, shit. I mean, yeah, like, I was gonna say, scrolling uh, through the list I've got, they're all... They're all... Bad. They're all extremely poorly written, or they're just jokes, essentially. If you had a you know, gun to your head, who's the best one? Knee-jerk reaction picking one. I, I guess I'm going to try and aim for someone... Maybe someone like Arthur? Where it's like, yeah, he, uh, he's an idiot, kind of. Here, hmm. I'm, 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 I got this list from Screen Rant. They're, they're ranking the villains. You don't want to know the rankings. But under Carly Morgenthau, they have, Carly is one of the more morally questionable characters in Phase 4. Um, she is neither good nor evil. <laughs> I, I don't, the people who write these are fucking losers. Sarah Brill, you're a loser. I, I'm surprised that people have this much trouble dealing with this, but, you know, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> literally evil through and through but that's all right that's fine whatever i don't understand what was as soon she as would she... be wanda if she had wanda's powers i think that's what like if she had the capacity to do the evils that wanda could do she would commit them didn't um i thought the show was trying to make a point that's like no she's evil when when she blew up the uh remember she blew up the building with all the tied up yeah people? she did she blew up all the people that was it for her up. as a character it's like once they did that it was over because um you know, he was like her, it says here, her goal throughout Falcon and the Winter Soldier was to restore the world to the way it was during um, the blip. Mm. For her, that meant creating equitable housing and healthcare. Okay. You know what? Thanos wanted to create equitable <laughs> healthcare, so I don't fucking know. Why? Why, why, why? Yeah, like I said, I, I wouldn't even know who to pick, but Gore, um, I couldn't even get a handle on exactly what the fuck he was up to. So the idea that he's the best of Phase Four is just like it's only because everyone else in it, Phase Four sucks. If that's why you pick anybody, I'm telling you, Gore was like speed running for yeah. ruining your villain. It really was. It, in both scenes he was in, you you instantly get the instant contradiction. It's kind of like the um, the, you I know, like a, if you had like a one on one one a one one class on like villain writing, you're like, gotta get that motivation done straight away. And then next scene, some in the you know, it shows how how much they are uh, motivated by it or something. But it just yeah, Gore just breaks those basic understandings of what you should do with the villain straight away. Don't even care. Um. You. 
Gore's intro would be him losing a daughter to the snap, but her returning five years later to him in a crumbled society. The snap should be the beginning of him losing his faith, thinking God's just like to see people suffer. I don't, yeah, I don't disagree at all. There's so much potential for the, the things they yeah. even had in Thor: Love and Thunder. Such a goofy movie, there's, but yeah, you can see all the stuff in there. That's dozens, pretty, yeah, yeah, dozens of different ways to make that work. It's such a neat concept. That's just, it's just a fucking shame. It's all wasted. Gonna be really? donating through Streamlabs now. YouTube just wants me to pay more. Hi, Raggle Daggle. Hello. Yeah, I mean, it's always an option. If anybody's curious, you can go through Streamlabs if you wanna. And I think you can even say more. Um, and it's uh, it's less uh like popped up for um. You know, like like YouTube take bigger cuts than Streamlabs do, but at the same time, a lot of people don't have ways to use it, so it's just an option. Hey, Mola, started watching Buffy. Season 1 was incredibly bad. I'm, I'm happy with saying that. Yeah, I agree. The constant that would get a far more serious response. Um, yeah, that's fair. That's, that's genuinely the first big flaw people will notice about the show is a world-building one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't deny it when I'm watching. It's like, yeah, it's unfortunate. I'm going to have to power through. Um, but hopefully... You'll enjoy it more so as you progress. Um, oh yeah, they, they, they say some more, but it's it's more so just a description of an episode and how it does that problem. It's like, agreed. Sometimes accompanied by weak explanations. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's bizarre. There's, there's crazy things keep happening in that town. Um, what was the show? Yeah, it was Stranger Things. That I was saying, like, they've got the same problem at mm -hmm. this point. The whole oh, yeah. world would be obsessed with this town because insane shit happens in it all the time. Um, it's only slightly more respectful about death than Batwoman IMO. The whole setting of the show seems non-functional for any serious character and... Uh, where's the next thing? Uh, only comical characters seem to fit in when inhabiting this place. I would say they um they get a bit better with that the more time goes on because it's uh it's definitely constructed to be just teen drama horror movie thing weekly. I don't think they uh they knew what they were going to be getting into when they made the first season. But uh, I don't even yeah I don't really disagree with this. Um. Scritches for the doggo, mm, good boy. Oh, thank you. Cool. Mall at rags, fringy, and metal. You are teleported together to the Eldritch world of Pokemon. What do you do to survive as a group? The Eldritch world of Pokemon. <laughs> what do you do to survive as a group against not just death from other Pokemon, but also from imprisonment and slavery in a Pokeball by Pokemon trainers? Wait, why would we be imprisoned in Pokeballs? Well, why would we? We can't fit in Pokeballs, right? Because Fringy's uh, a bird, Mauler's an, a long man, and I'm a dog. So I don't think we can be trapped in Pokeballs, right? Oh, dude, Going imagine that. Pokemon? Like, you know, you got your Pokemon just in general, and then some guy's just walking his dog, just a normal-ass dog, and, you know, the leash breaks or something like that, the dog starts running, and then some other kid just goes, oh my god, a Pokemon, and throws a ball and actually, like, goes, and just, like, goes, and you go, oh god, like, what have you done? And they're just like, well, it's my Pokemon now. He's just trapped in there. And I guess when he comes out, he could beat the shit out of the kid or something. I don't, I don't even know. know. There's... <laughs> That's my Labrador. And it's like, no, it's Labrador. And he can shoot flames or whatever. He can bark. That's his power. Uh, so, yeah, as for how we survive, I mean, we should be fine because... With how the yeah. rules work and stuff. But um, it would be a little bit terrifying in terms of just like, oh, man. This world is kind of fucking nuts. Um, yeah, a little bit. But, you know, probably get used to it after a while, I guess. People seem happy I mean, in that it's world. It's also very likely. You could just have a job that doesn't have anything to do with Pokemon, you know? There, there's probably still just office workers and people in cubicles and IT guys. And I assume that we'll, I assume we just run a podcast, right? Probably. I, I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind a Pokemon friend. Like, you know, like Meowth, but like, you know, not yeah. DJs or anything. That'd be fun. 
Yeah, just a Meowth who's just sort of semi-sarcastic, but you know, he, he's a cool guy, and he hangs out, and you can do stuff, and you could talk to him. Well, let's say you could do more than talk to him. He can actually talk back. You can have conversations with this Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Hey, boys. Yeah, I started watching right. EFAP while just coming out of a long, apathetic depression. The way y'all care about right and wrong, unlike the writers of the show you cover, helped me reconstruct my emotional moral compass. Stay toxic, love a brooder. Oh. Um, yeah, that's one of the aspects, I think, of uh, talking about writing that I think a lot of... <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit mean, okay? Narrow-minded people don't realize is a thing. When you're like, I would like to spend my time talking about important issues. And you're like, yeah, okay, that's great. Not like stories. When stories okay. will like go over all of these important issues all the time, and they will prompt discussions. It's like, why is it a problem that the main character doesn't seem to care when... Um, well, because uh, we're mentioning uh, Multiverse of Madness. There's that lady who's got a kid uh, in a little, like, uh, pram thing, and there's a car that's about to crush her. You know, and the hero grabs the car and just poofs it out of existence. Great. Uh, as long as nobody was in the car, I guess. Or you could grab it and toss it away, and it hits another innocent person in the background. And it's like, who cares? He saved the person. It's like, he killed someone. Like, what the hell? And, and had he only had those choices... It's going to crush her and the little baby, or he has to throw it on a different kid, like a five-year-old. Then we could spend a while talking about whether or not he would make that choice, and whether or not we would make that choice, and what does it mean, you know? And then someone else is mm -hmm. just like, you know, oh, you're only talking about dirty stuff, like the film. I just be like, I don't know, man. Talking about all kinds of stuff. And just like... uh, yep. Interestingly, there was a post on the subreddit the other day saying uh, the, the Accords don't solve anything in, in Civil War. They only um, pass the, uh, like... Pass the buck in terms of blame, like instead of, I don't know, have it, having it so that blah 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 happens, like it, it, it'll go to like agencies and organizations, and then there's a red tape in terms of figuring who's at fault for what, this, that, and the other. It's funny because I was reading it, and I was like, yeah, that's kind of the idea um, with the Accords. You don't, because as soon as it's unsanctioned and unconnected to any kind of organizations, it's just like, yeah, uh, Scarlet Witch made a decision, and or I guess Wander at that point. And we've got to hold her accountable. Meanwhile, if she's like an agent that's been approved by an organization, that organization does have checks and balances that would have to be solved, and maybe they don't get held hyper accountable or whatever. But like otherwise, it's just this rogue element. It's basically vigilantism that, uh, and that's just like completely unacceptable. I've always found it fascinating that the accords create loads of what I think is interesting conversations because of the fact that a lot of people hate them for the fact that they don't solve a problem definitively when that was never going to be what they could do. Well, it's kind of not possible, no. really, is it? It doesn't but, solve the problem. It's like, yeah, but it's a pretty darn good... Would you rather live in a world with the Accords or without them? Yeah, they have to have it, like, it, it, uh, eventually. That's pretty much what that scene's all about. It's like, this has been ridiculous. Um, but then for some reason, the knee-jerk reaction is like, do you really think this will prevent collateral damage? And it's like, no. No. Not even and at all. That would be a legitimate thing to ask if that was supposed to be what it stopped? Like, it's just, uh, like, this, the Accords, yes, we will stop collateral damage. It's like the, the big problem right now is Iron Man fired that missile and it blew up a fucking orphanage, what the hell? And, and you know, on one hand it's, well, uh, talk to Tony Stark, that was his decision to make, or Tony was approved by the UN slash whatever. Uh, they made this decision for these reasons, they're very sorry that it's had this result, you know, and then it gets dealt with the same way normal collateral damage does, and a lot of people are saying, yeah, but there's loads of corruption in government to the point where they can get away with some of the most, like, hideous horrors. Uh, well, I guess let's just history. disband the whole thing and go live in the woods. I was actually <laughs> gonna say, it's like, that is true, that the government do get away with fucking horrors, but, um, I don't know, I don't know that that's not still better than individuals committing these things and then nothing happens. Like, oh man, imagine heroes were real and we were all talking about Wanda's decision. And we didn't get it from the point of view of the film, we instead just knew that she blew up a building. That's the headline. She just blew up a fucking building and killed a bunch of people. We'd be like, why the hell is she allowed to be doing this? Like, how is she in the position that this is even happening? Meanwhile, if, if uh, because she's an individual. Meanwhile, if she was working for an organization that has checks and balances, they could then, you know, give us all of the rationale maybe, or the explain the situation better. 
Um, so uh, what I'm getting at is there's loads of interesting conversation to have as a result of this, I think. Uh, but we don't yeah. get anywhere near that now in the newer ones. We have to just sort of invent what the story could have been and then talk about those ideas. Oh, well. Hey, boys. I started listening to hey. EFAP or watching EFAP while just... Oh, wait. No, sorry. I read that. That's the one that we just read. Thank you very much. Sorry. I uh, uh, hope you're doing all right. Yeah. A runaway train is bearing down on five people, and you're stood on the platform next to an enormously fat man. I've heard this one before. Pushing the fat man, fat man will derail the train, saving the people, but the fat man will die. You could also jump in front of the train using your own body. Um, there's no, there's no more message, so I assume that's the question then. Uh, I would push the fat guy to save the lives of the five. Well, so they were saying that you could push him in, or you could jump in yourself. Oh, uh, well, I'm I'm not fat enough to stop the train. That would I, be I assume as part of the crash. question is that you know, because this is the other part that I, I usually use to counter this one, is that I can't guarantee pushing him will save the five, so I probably wouldn't. I don't think that's... Uh, um, I'd have but, to have a really high level of confidence that it would... Yeah, because if, uh, if it was baked in, then I knew, but, yeah. which at that point just means why wouldn't you just do the whole... Uh, the lever one, but I think that's the point of the question is to make it more of a you have killed this man uh, definitively, but yeah, um, if they're saying would I push, basically if they're saying there's five people to save, it's going to cost a human life, would I give my own or give the one of the person next to me? Um, that's, that's the uh, if all things like because this is the thing as well, it depends how much time I have to think about this. But because if I was able to talk to this person and maybe um we could figure out between us who we think is the one that has more potential to add to the world if the other's gone. Um, but if it were just on the spot, uh, can't say. Probably would. Uh, I'd like to think I'd give my own life to save five peoples. It's one of those awkward ones though, where you're like, I guess I can't say that I would do that until I'm forced into that situation. Yeah, exactly. Anything else, it's just like, yeah, I guess I hope I would, but I don't know what I'd do if I wasn't, like, under pressure at that moment. I'd push Fatty in. <laughs> well, the other thing is, like, there's a lot of variables. What if you push him on and then the, something bad happens with the train? You know, like, even worse. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm crying and shaking so hard, I can't believe Rags would be so racist as to say clown person <gasps> with Fringy right there. Oh, oh my goodness, Fringy, yeah, are you a clown God. person underneath them? Is that why you wear the mask to hide the the red no. nose and the the yellow, uh, the the orange hair? That's all poofy. Nope. Can't say that's the case. He takes the mask off when he goes to sleep, and the inside is just it's totally white because all the clown whites are rubbed off against it through the day. And no one says anything because they're too intimidated by Rags to disagree with him. Do better, Efap. Rags, you're a pretty bad guy. Oof. I am a pretty bad guy. Oh, man. Yeah. Completely destroyed. Uh, this big, is such biting criticism. Big RLM fan here who really likes to listen to EFAP discussing RLM discussing Star Wars. I'd like to hear your take on Plinkett's take on the Star Wars ring theory at 11 minute mark of his Mr. Plinkett's Star Wars Awakens review. I remember that. Um, He basically... Ring uh, yeah, ring the ring theory for the, the prequels to the you would have probably seen this, but you, you might have forgotten it by now. So probably think of the prequels as a uh, story t in terms of their story. They're supposed to like reflect and be opposite to the OT. As weird as that is, they are like uh, if you compare the oh fuck, I, I can't quite. I think it's something like the um. <laughs> They they have lots of scenes. So you you take um the the end of Return of the Jedi. You have the throne room scene. Meanwhile, the beginning of Revenge of the Sith is the throne room scene. Uh, I think I think there's an argument to be made by like that that there was some approach deliberately by George to do that on purpose. There's there's a level of of reflective rhyming or whatever. He goes over all of it. I don't care that much about how much of it was or wasn't intentional. Um. It's supposed to be like this cool big thing about how, and 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 I think Plinkett posits that this is something that George would have read in some kind of uh, uh, writing for dummies book or some shit like that. I remember just thinking like this is, this is weird and not at all 
what I would say about uh, why the prequels of the OT or any of Star Wars is well written or not well written. Um, it was a little bit confusing. He spent a while talking about it though, and I think it was because someone was using it to try and say that the prequels were really good. I think. Um, I I'm. I, I had a hard time following that, sorry. I had a hard time following it when I watched it. It was it's because I think Plinky tries to point out that it there are things that match that idea, but there are also things that go opposite to it, so it's it's I don't know. If you guys wanna know more about that, it's the I think the first like third of Plinkett's video on The Force Awakens. All in there. Oh, okay. I might do that. I might do that. Um and the last one for Streamlabs for now is Jesus Christ, that Sonic drawing more. Beautiful, isn't it? It's great, isn't it? Mm. Mm -hmm. What I call fire. talented drawing. Um, so now we'll check out EFAP 194's remaining Super Chats. How exiting. Mola, you missed 99 image memes last meme fap. My phone counted. I've sent them to you on Discord. Also, thing of the day is speculative evolution. People have asked us about speculative evolution before. We've 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 already yeah talked about that a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. We have indeed. And uh, and they said hi, Shad. Listen, not all memes get shown on meme fap. They have to pass my smell test to some degree, like make me smile or make me laugh. Sort of thing. If if it's a meme that I don't understand at all, that there's a chance it'll get in. But if it's a meme I I do understand and think is just not very good, then yeah, it might not get in. Cause I'm I'm so sorry, but you know what? Part of the value of memes is that you guys get to share them with each other. But not every meme would make it onto meme fat because then we would actually not be able to catch up. Um, I try and refine them. I I put them through the meme strainer, and they uh. All the quality memes remain, right? High quality. Uh, I'll probably hire um, you know, a, a meme, uh, a meme judger at some point to to filter them for me. Someone of very high high brow and high taste. Can't have a meme fap without borders, exactly. Because we are low brow and tasteless here on EFAP. We need someone who can. Oh, we just we just need someone around here with good taste we could trust. You know. There is a Simpsons reference for everything, everywhere, all at once. Nice. That, that's that movie we like. It is a pretty good movie. Yeah. Borg says he has two uh, dads, yeah. yet in Ragnarok he talks about his mum and her boyfriend. Taika broke his own continuity and put more... put in more gay. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh. <laughs> oh, wow. The, yeah, well, yeah, we, we did talk about this at some point, that... Uh, Korg was supposed to have a mum, according to Ragnarok, but then he's got no mum when you get to Thor Love and Thunder. But Tiger's already said he just didn't give a fuck, so whatever. He'll break his own mythos in a second, baby. For a really hilarious joke. Oh, yeah. Super funny. Dwayne, or Blaine, right? I can't remember anymore. I can't remember. I'll never remember. So I guess... I'll never think about it again if I don't, if I can avoid it, you know? So I guess now Korg's people have one gender? Damn, that's one less than humans have. Wow. Hey yo. Uh I don't even I don't know if that would contradict anything Korg has said before, but uh, except for the, the mother stuff, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's hard to follow, but they were Taika's made up species as far as I know, so he didn't have to fuck up his own work, you know, I'm just saying. I would have loved Beta Ray Bill in this movie. It would have made a lot of sense if the movie played more into the Guardians, but we needed female Thor. Um, is Beta Ray Bill going to turn up in Guardians 3 then? Or is, mm. No, that's Adam Warlock, right? He's turning up. Yeah. Yeah. I know that he is. Mola, Jay, Fringy, Rag, and Shad are all on together and from mm. the city of England. This is epic. England is your city. Komodo hype. <laughs> All right. Good to hear. <laughs> Ant-Man could cure cancer directly. Could he? Is he that small? Do you like go subatomic? I don't know. Go right into your bloodstream and beat up individual cells. Bad. <laughs> I. 
Oh, someone someone posted this in the EFAP podcast chat. Let me paste it and then I'll explain why. <laughs> I oh, really yeah. like it. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. You guys know the Hallmark channel? Is that a thing that you yeah. have? I know what yeah. Hallmark movies are. Yeah. So my mom That's and incredible. some people in my family, they love the Hallmark channel. Um, my mom, some of my aunts, you know, my grandma, they love they love the Hallmark channel. They love watching it. My dad fucking hates it. <laughs> he, he hates when my mom watches it. He does something else. He goes and does something. And <laughs> he's like all those movies, the same, the same damn thing. It always happens the same. You could you, you know everything that's gonna happen before it happens. All those movies are the same. They have the exact same plot. There's never anything interesting about it. Um, so i'm like funny. yeah yeah man i know i know and i'm i'm actually gonna send this to him it almost seems worth uh, studying to some degree like because it's like down to a formula like we, we talk about the marvel or the disney formula or shit like that no nah, it's the hallmark formula that you need to be aware of it's everything it's, from the backgrounds to the, the outfit the, the colors wom woman's always in red the guy's always wearing green those are christmas colors right red and green so yes yeah get him like a green jacket or sweater and get her like a red dress or coat let's um, see we have some of the names we've got and of course christmas basically the, the same poses every time Bunch? Yeah, very. Yeah, they're 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 either holding something in between them, or yeah, it's very very formulaic. Uh, yes. <laughs> Christmas under the stars, Christmas on my mind, merry and bright, holiday hearts are. Oh yeah, look the 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 um the fonts that they're using for the titles. Yeah, the, they're very similar. A, Cursive. There's only a couple that stand out. A Blue Ridge Mountain Christmas on the left middle. That one's that unique. That sort of stands yeah. out. Yeah, they're they're really uh, breaking the mold with that one. Well, because most of them have like a lot of gold sort of injected in there, but there are only a couple that are out outside where it's you know I was, winter. I was saying the font, the font of a blue ridge. Oh, yeah, and the Christmas, font as well. Yeah, sure. It, it's legitimately unique. All of the others are breaking new ground. A new font for your <laughs> Christmas movie on Hallmark. It must be very frustrating if you have like a a, a Hallmark app or. A um, like you're browsing through their oh, gallery yeah, like, oh, the movies. What was that, Christmas what was that, that one? That I'll never. One. <laughs> if you want to hide a Christmas movie, put it in a forest of Hallmark Christmas movies. You don't even have to hide it. It doesn't even have to be a crypto movie. <laughs> You'll just never find it. That'd be it's tempting like as fuck though to like copy all of this and even maybe a lot of the formula in the actual movie, but make it like a horror movie. Just uh, gradually change some bits and bobs until you get to that third act, and it all unravels completely. And see if you can slot it right in. So the the Hallmark Channel is the same Hallmark as like the 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 brand, right? I'm presuming. Like it's, I, it's the same. I I've always assumed so. It's everything. the same logo. So it looks I like the same so. logo. I want I wonder what the product because they probably do product placement, right? In these movies, like um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because Hallmark makes. Oh my god, Hallmark makes jewelry, right? Or am I totally confused? Hallmark like makes greeting company? cards. Yeah, I've always known of the cards. Yeah, right, right, yeah. So maybe they have specific unique cards that they uh they put they put in to the film so that oh, people I want thought to buy I recognized it. the guy in uh in Right Before Christmas. That's Chad Michael Murray. I'm really struggling to find that one because I have to like I have to keep skipping. Could you give through. us a row and a column or something? Um, the bottom one from bottom, uh, penultimate second, one. Yeah, second from. Okay. <laughs> All right. God, what happened to him? Yeah. He his career the second from the right was yeah. different than this, wasn't it? <laughs> like, I thought he was. Hey, like maybe a, this is just a thing he did. Maybe they just wrote him a check and. Some people graduate from Hallmark, and other people return to Hallmark. Or it's not probably return, a steady guess, check. It probably it's, is, yeah. I guess and he, he, it's probably super, super easy to make those if you're an actor. I imagine that they only take like a month to shoot, maybe even less than that. Pr a week. Because, uh... like, legitimately, <laughs> the like, because the, some of the, because I've seen like some of these, because you know you're around family stuff, right? It's like three locations, 
that right. you reincorporate over and over. You have the girl, you have the guy's apartment, you have the girl's house, okay. or you have the business that she has. It, it's all it, it's all super basic. And so you have like three, maybe f four actual locations, a couple closets or whatever or apartment rooms you could shoot in. And it's so easy. No, you, you could you could just go to a house and you have half your sets. <laughs> yeah, you got to see this. So what I know him from was One Tree Hill. I don't know if you guys ever saw any of that back in the day. I've seen a little bit of it. Teen drama show. And he like that, that got him. I remember seeing him in House of Wax, the remake of an older horror movie. And I remember being like, oh, look at him go. He's in movies now. And then Freaky Friday. I was like, oh, he was in that. I see. I remember, and then, and then his other thing he's best known for is a Cinderella story, and I was like, what is what is the era here? And it's like 2003, 2005, 2004, 2003, 2004, and it's like, ah, oh, so that's where the career peaked. Yeah. But I was like, I could have sworn I saw him something. And I was checking, it's like, oh yeah, he was in Agent Carter, because I watched, I think, season one of that. Um, and I was like, what else is he doing then, and why is this happening? And I was scrolling, you got... So, 2021, Angel Falls Christmas, TV movie. And it's like, okay. 2021, Toying with the Holidays, TV movie. I like, okay, Too Close for Christmas, 2020, TV movie. 2020, Love in Winterland, TV movie. 2019, Right Before Christmas, TV movie. That's, Jesus. And He's then, getting those checks, man. Road to Christmas, TV movie. The Beach House, TV movie. What, why has he done so many of these? What's, is it Christmas Cupid, TV movie. Lies in Plain Sight, TV movie. Is there like a? I wonder if. <laughs> so, I wonder how many of these actors actually prefer that, where it's a lot less of a spotlight. They still get to do acting. Maybe they totally knock it out of the park every time, and they enjoy it, and they're legitimately like really excellent additions well, to these productions. Just, um, but it's given the nature of being an actor, a consistent. It's always paycheck, more, and more, and more. Yeah. Preferable for oh, he for was... some rather than the you know. He was in one of the the Bruce Willis movies, you know the the ones. Oh, like the ones that he did oh recently. no! He was in Fortress. The Lynch movies. What's what's the what's what? the, a group of criminals led by Robert's former nemesis Balzati, who's hell bent on revenge, forces a retired CIA agent and his estranged son into a high tech bunker. Will the thick walls and defenses be powerful enough against Balzari's forces? Probably they will be. <laughs> Probably. I think they'll be. <laughs> Yeah, that'll probably be enough. That's probably a great movie. It's got 3.4 out of 10. <laughs> Yo, good. it's up that high? Nice. Yeah. I just got Chad Michael Murray and Bruce Willis in it, man. From Pretty the producers of The Irishman. Yeah. There you go. Apparently, oh, there's, there's no easy list. Hallmark... Uh, oh no, that's too early. How many movies come out on Hallmark? Oh wow, they've got individual. My God, they they make a lot of movies. <laughs> like they make a lot of movies every year. Like I just pulled up a list. It's Hallmark Channel, and it's like a movie every week. Like actually every week, literally every single week. <laughs> Fifty two movies a year. Oh, my God. You might be right. Maybe they do only take like a week or two weeks to shoot. I'm telling you, if you if you see these movies, which I wouldn't recommend, it's just it's it's just content. It's the ultimate. Put it on low volume. Leave it on while you're doing something else. While you walk around the house, and it's just sort of playing. It. My my aunt says she watches them because they're safe. You know that everything's going to work out okay in the end. You know they're going to get back together. You know that love will bloom. You know that everything will be wonderful, and it's just safe and easy, and you could turn it on, and you don't have to worry about anything. I guess that's... And that's the formula. Yeah, it's just, just kind of not why I, I like stories. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I, I like stories that are... Um... That where I don't necessarily know how things are going to play out or where there's interesting or confronting themes makes you think makes you feel you know it's kind of what i'm in it for like the second act low points of these are always things like like they break up gentle or some revelation no, gentle misunderstanding yeah i was gonna say breakup right. might or, even be too much <laughs> yeah breakups right, are a bit much right. that's some that's some of the high stakes shit i was gonna say that christmas lights stop working <laughs> <Hold on>. also, <laughs> yeah no. 
like make the uh the ones the daytime movies where like there's like the crazy psycho lady you've got like the good lady protagonist and then the evil crazy lady or dude who wants to like either destroy her life or steal her boyfriend that's like a pretty common uh trope in these daytime movies isn't it do they make yeah, those I think ones so. or or do they make or is that a lifetime because there's hallmark and there's lifetime right they're the like two daytime movie producers these are the like <laughs> it's so funny because they're probably gonna score higher than the average marvel product right now in terms of yeah, almost, certainly. Yeah, Al almost certainly they are because they're just it's just content on the, it's it's and, content on the pipeline it's the formula it's the cut and paste it's the it's the copy and stamp that's it, what it is these are products through and through this probably if we watch the recently. the 15 there i wonder if we would conclude any of them are worth seeing Do you think it would be zero um probably none of them are worth watching but there might be one or two that have just an unintentionally funny scene I could see us uh, concluding it, you know, that one that of them is sort of fine. Thing. Like, I could see us being like, that was a fine story for what they were going for. Or something I'd like say that. Just, a third just, of them would be fine. I guess, though, if you've seen one, you've kind of seen them all. Like, that's, Kind of. We've already... Yeah. It, it, because the stakes are so it's low and the in. character, like, sort of journeys are going to be so safe. That's so normal. That, yeah. yeah, we'll just be like, yep, that was that. What does it mean to screw it up, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, like I'm saying it in the sense get, of um, um, we're probably not going to be like scrutinizing and being like how the fuck. It'll probably at least one of them will be about as good as it probably could have been in terms of just mm -hmm. not very, uh, not many very many very very many variables. I, I, I give up. Mary, no, that's that's good. These are all Christmas themes, so that works. Yeah. Um, but very if variables. you if that was your challenge, which would be an interesting challenge to watch all fifteen of these movies. And then talk about them afterwards. Once you get to five, that's when the dread sets in of I'm legitimately having trouble telling Remember, these apart. Yeah. Now. Like you have to you have to take notes with like screenshots of events so that you don't confuse the movies as you think about them into the future. Well, because if we did like an EFAB of watching those fifteen and then we get to like you know, I'm like, oh, I don't know, Rags, I think, uh, you know, Christmas in the Stars was better. And you're like, which who was, which one was that? Was that with Michael and, and you Linda? Have to and I'm like, the plot. <laughs> no. You start to recount the plot, and then you confuse that with a different one. Yeah. So you inadvertently describe two different movies, almost perfectly cut off in the middle, where one is one movie, and the second half is just a completely different movie. And then, and then, then I maybe... say, oh, yeah, I remember that movie. What if you chopped up all 15 and made your own movie? Like, with all the different... Like, <laughs> a little experiment. Can you edit all 15 movies together while keeping the... <laughs> it's, just, it's just this fucking couple that wear red and green in every single... But they're all different somehow. They keep switching actors between scenes. Yeah, if if if, the, if you allowed only the continuity uh, aspect of different actors and the names, could you... Yeah, could... <laughs> you probably could create a, a film... Because because if you had fifteen, these are probably what ninety ish minutes or so. Factor in commercials and it's a, yeah, they're probably an what, hour and a half. Yeah. Probably shorter, two hours. They're two hours after commercials, that, actually. Yeah, they're, maybe they're even seventy minutes. minutes. Which is yeah, exactly. They probably adhere more so to standard like story structure than Marvel ever do. And it's just so interesting well, how that it, happens. It, it can't go wrong, you know. Like there's no way to fuck it up. I, I wouldn't be surprised, I'd probably put money on it, that all of them have the three-act structure. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely they do. Um, uh, and you know exactly when each begins and when each ends. Uh, mm -hmm. So let me do... So yeah, let's say these are around 70 minutes. Let's divide that by 15. So each movie would get about five minutes that you have to work with. So yank out and try and stitch with other movies. Good work. Watch all 15 and then try and guess which ones are which. I mean, from the titles alone, that would be kind of funny, because it's impossible. <laughs> more than 15 hours, actually. It's probably more like a whole day. Oh, no. Like a literal day watching Hallmark movies, no thanks. Just, I just, I'm just amused by the idea that you wouldn't... Like, watching them would not give you any inkling as to which title is which. Yeah, like, you'd, you'd be like, ah, that's why it's Christmas Under the Stars, or... Ah, well, I guess Christmas I see, in well, Rome, that's probably the one in Rome. Probably, <laughs> so. Yeah. You got that, I guess. 
Um, the Holocon 6 million flavors, you won't believe it. Oh, that's, I get that reference. I get that reference. That's, uh, that's a very... That's a reference to the Holocaust. And, or and, and the Infinity 1940s. Uh, yeah, that's right. It, was, it was a reference. big deal. Yeah, it was bad stuff. Yeah. What about Stalin Bucks? I heard it's popular in Russia. Infinity Scones would make more sense. Um... I don't think any of it makes sense, alright? I think they just wouldn't build that. I think it's really, really yeah. inappropriate. This would be like a Holocaust survivor making Hungry Hitler's Pancake House. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Auschwaffle House. Mm-hmm. This is officially my final MCU movie. Never again I'm gonna let my friends drag me to these movies. I am fully out. Wow. What would take you to watch another one, though? Would it be us telling you it's a really good one, trust us? Would that be it? Or would it be one that's like, this is the one where all of the, the characters come back. Iron Man's coming back. So is Cap. So is uh, Ben Affleck's Daredevil. Okay, everyone. Which is I don't want to see them anymore. That's the problem. Oh, I'm just saying, like, not because you think it'll be good, but because you're like, oh, I better go see this because everyone's going to be talking about it. It's um, part of a reason to see these things sometimes. Everyone does talk about these movies when they come out for yep. a few weeks or a month, and then they disappear, and then it's uh, the next thing, and th then it disappears. Like, t I'll tell you, I know it's a bit of a meme at this point, but like, we were legitimately going to do a Moon Knight EFAP. We have things to say about that. There's yep. Moon Knight's probably the best show of them all, I think, that they've made. Of the ones we've um, seen, because yeah. Because it, it has good things in it. Um, and it has really great really. acting, but but man, like it just got swallowed up by all of the other things, and everyone stopped talking about it. No one gives a shit about Moon Knight. Well, yeah, and it's not something that can be done spontaneously because uh, I need to rewatch it to be able to set up an EFAP for that now, and I just don't have the fucking time. Yeah, I just my I just interest is just unfortunately waned. It it is unfortunate that it just kind of got swallowed up by other things. There are a couple of things. There's a big old pile of like things we never covered that we were gonna at some point, you know. And yeah. Moon Knight's yeah. just on the top of the pile now. He's just sitting there, sad. I already forgot Moon Knight existed. Yeah, it happens. It does happen. Um, I'd call my restaurant the Hindenburger, where prices <laughs> go up in oh. flames. Oh, nice. The Hindenburger. I like that. Marvel's just fallen victim <laughs> to classic movie-making trap. If 10 is good, then 11 will be better. What? Oh, do I'm you, not... Could you read that again? Are they suggesting, like, just more is better of whatever? Because I follow you I think they one. can afford to keep making more, and what they have works. So they just have the means to do things more than most people would if they could. It's not that Disney's formula is necessarily unique. It's just that they have the money to be able to constantly pump into churning these things out, mm. and they make enough money to where it's just justified. It's like I was saying, like Carly would be as evil as Wanda probably if she just had Wanda's powers. <laughs> what is that? Jay, there's two T's in the word battle. Would your, you humor my OD, uh, ODST, holy fuck, my OCD, and pronounce at least one of them? Thank you. Now humor humanity and get kicked. So, battle, well, so battle is how a lot of yeah. British people pronounce it, but battle. would that would you call that battle? Is that removing both T's? I guess so. Battle. No, because battle. It all, it, you, ba only, you don't say battle. Battle. <laughs> battle. Battle. I think that's just that's just a pronunciation accent sort of thing. No, I know. I'm just uh, I never thought about it as removing both T's. Battle. Battle. Both T's because the because then you just say bail. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, say, yeah. Because you think that, that's how it sounds. Look sound. at that a bail. But if you put b a dash l e bal bal bal, it's like it's like it adds um, it's like it adds a an a like a like an apostrophe, like you're oh, saying yeah, like, like a tribal like, name, like like when they say British, British, yeah, British. Leave Jay alone. Racism. Uh, with Infinity Cones, didn't they even make the easy joke of if you buy one of every flavor of ice cream, you get half off? 
Oh wow! Yeah, you could. Do oh that. no! Yes. it's just. It's so it's tasteful. Mm. Oh well, they're saying they didn't even make that joke. But to be fair, oh, I, I think if they like made that. that joke, it would be worse. That sounds. Yeah, I. That sounds exactly like. I mean, yeah. it sounds like a joke they made. You know. It does sound like a joke. I think Tiger would have put that in had he heard you say that as a suggestion. He'd be like, "Oh, that's funny as fuck." Oh, why didn't I think of that? Oh, yeah. damn. Why didn't I think of that? Just like, uh, why did you think of a lot of things while you were writing that film? <laughs> why did you do why this to us? Why did you think of these? Yeah. <laughs> why did you think of all these things? Um. Oh, apparently, I don't know if this is true, but uh, uh, Swin and Chance said it's called a glottal stop when Brits do that. A glottal stop? I don't even know there was a word for it. If, sounds like German that, that sounds like it could be what it is, so yeah. Um, I wish we could get a scene with Charles Dance and uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Oh yeah, the guy who plays Gus, right? Um, mm. Two outstanding actors with great on-screen press. So it's not even... They're just saying put those two in a scene. <laughs> it's like, yeah, sure, yeah. okay. Imagine the potential. Yeah, let's have... Um, let's have them play two Marvel villains who team up. It'll be great. It'll take full advantage of their amazing acting abilities. I'm sure of it. I'm 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 waiting for the day they cast Charles Dance in the MCU as some fucking general. And he he says like fire the guns and then that's it. Open fire. Uh wait, aren't all our guardians considered gods? I don't think I don't think so. I don't, I don't So this is the thing about when the biology of Asgardians was confusing from the get go. Um It's like we've got this civilization, Odin, Thor. Loki's a frost giant, but he's also considered a god. And, like, I mean, he is a god, I, I think. I don't know what it takes to qualify as a god, but the thing is, if Loki is a frost giant, there's a lot of those. And it's like, mm. do they all have... And his power levels are insane, but then they do have throwaway lines to say he learned those from Frigga. So it's like, so he's a, he's a magician then, kind of, like a, like a spellcaster. I, 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 don't, I don't want to call him a sorcerer, but, I mean... Is he not that? Is he a warlock? Um, and is that all it takes to essentially get to godhood? Because he he's considered one. And and then Thor and Odin, like their their family tree is, I assume, separate from the civilians of Asgard. But they're all Asgardians, just as Thor is an Asgardian. But biology wise, they're all very different. Because like the civilians get wiped out pretty easily, like the the humans from Earth sort of thing. Yeah. So. You know, and I'm sure someone's gonna be like, no, 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 it does make sense if you think it's like, oh, well, I, I don't get it. Uh, from what I saw in Thor, I sort of just tried to hand wave it a little bit as being like, look, as long as it doesn't fuck anything up, I'll just try not to think about it. I assume that they were just special people amongst the people. Yeah, which, you know, makes you wonder, how does that happen? But hey, you know. I guess that's just sort of how it is. It's just sort of how it is. If you, if, if, I'm just like that. Because, you know, like, Hela is... If, if everybody who's ever been in the MCU was currently alive and we remove benefits like the Stones or Book of Vishanti or whatever else, I mean, Hela's one of the strongest people in the entire MCU, isn't she? And she's... I think so. She's Odin's daughter. So it's like... Is Odin the stronger, one of the strongest people then? Probably. In his prime, I guess? Mm-hmm. Is Odin a wizard of some kind? I don't know how we define these things. I don't think they cared really to define it either, but uh, it's gone right. to the point now where I, just, I got no clue what's going on anymore. Um, I've rarely seen anything reek of insecurity as hard as this film. Next to sincere, confident films like No Way Home, Maverick, Everything Every All at Once, this is just pathetic. Never liked Taika Cohen. I mean, Taika Waititi, I don't know. Uh, he, always, he was always fit for SNL skits and nothing more. With Thor Love and Thunder, he's given infinite money and it's like he couldn't come up with anything, so instead of letting someone else take the wheel, he freaked out, got high, and played classic Hollywood card of Did you know it's silly to care about this stuff? I am very intelligent. No, you're not, Taika. You're this, uh, not some wacky genius that's smarter than everybody around you. You're cringe, insecure. Ragnarok was always yep. a soundstage SNL sludge. I disagree with you there. Uh, yeah. 
You don't even know how pacing, yeah, editing, or sound right mixing now. work? I'm not even sure I would go after him for editing, pacing, and sound mixing and stuff. It's... I mean, I could go through Ragnarok yeah, and probably oddest, find issues, but... The oddest pacing that I that I think existed in... Wait, are you talking about Ragnarok or Love of Thunder? Just generally. Well, I was talking about Ragnarok for a second there. That I feel like if oh, okay. we were to go through it, we'd probably find some stuff. Wrong. I think it's interesting that when they were fighting on the moon, we all thought... At least, at least two or three of us thought that that was the final fight. And yeah. And then it was... They carried on and were like, oh, I guess we're, we're, we're going to go again. All right. Um, but like, yeah, it's it's unfortunate that a lot of people, because of how bad Love and Thunder was, have like imprinted all of the issues of Love and Thunder onto Ragnarok. When it's like, trust me, Ragnarok's got so much fucking more going for it. Absolutely I've already explained this on a couple There's of streams. Of it's like for those who don't remember, a lot of the comedy was character based in Ragnarok. We don't really have that at all in this anymore. Um, that alone is a huge difference. Ragnarok had like a point. Ragnarok had a thematic value. It pushed a lot of. Thor's journey forward. It tried to make something of Thor's journey. Um, I would even argue that, you know, Endgame helped destroy what Ragnarok set up for Thor. <laughs> yeah. Um, before yeah, Lord, Thor: Love and Thunder did. So, I'm not going to say Ragnarok's great, um, but I would, I would refuse to say it's as bad as Thor: Love and Thunder. There's no fucking way. Um. They only give you an Oscar for being an exotic, part Maori, Cohen who mocked the mustache man, aka easy mode. You can say that, but Jojo Rabbit is fantastic. It's not just movie, Jojo Rabbit's really good. movie made fun of Hitler, therefore people say it's good. It's like, that's not why I think it's good. Um, Tom Cruise's Giga Chad, you're crying insecure, Wojak wearing a smug Wojak mask. Well, I mean... <laughs> what? I mean... I mean uh, Maverick can be good, but Jojo Rabbit could also be. Why can't people just like this? This weird thing where like you someone... know, two movies that aren't like each other can both be good, right? He can he can make a bad movie and a good movie. You can do that. Uh, we've already mm -hmm. got all of the explanation. He just didn't give a fuck about Thor: Love and Thunder, which sucks. And I think you should be criticized for that. But to be like, see proof that he was never good. It's like no, that's not how that works. Guys, the the same person made Alien and Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Okay. Same guy. We just understand there's different contexts, motivations, values, and approaches, and producers, and settings, all kinds of things. And like I said, it's just, just, just you're all right. Taika might still make something good for the rest of his life, but it's fucking hell. If he he's might, still, yeah. If he has the approach he had for Love and Thunder, he ain't never making a good thing again. It's gonna be schnitzel's bad forevers. So. Taika's good when he cares, but I hope he didn't care about The Mandalorian, if that's the case, because his episode was shit. Yes. Jojo Rabbit felt a bit pandering. Dude, the film, if anything, is pandering edgy at times. Who? Yeah, I I don't think it was pandering at all. I don't think so either. It was. It's really good. Jojo Rabbit's a really good movie. I don't know, I, I get the sense that people are shitting on it a little bit because we want to we wanna lower... The assessment of uh, Taika's work as a whole, when I would just rather be straightforward about it. He's making, he's a mixed bag, he's made good stuff, he's made okay stuff, he's made bad stuff, and he's made awful stuff. But you know what? That should probably be more normal than we expect when it comes to an artist. Probably. But um, I think it's easier for us to categorize when it's like, no, these are the good ones, these are the bad ones, these are the good ones, these are the bad ones. Uh, why are we talking about Thor? Spider-Man's coming out on PC in August. Another win for the PC Master Race. Mm, yeah, yeah, lots of dubs. Um, I hope... I, I heard it's good. I hope a lot of people play it and enjoy it. Someone said a lot like Joss Whedon. Yeah, he's made awful stuff, bad stuff, okay stuff, good stuff, and great stuff. Get the whole selection. Uh, if you guys want a show with strong villains, strong heroes, great visuals, C and E, S and P, and will make you hate Disney, I don't even know what, what some of these things are. I highly recommend Tron Uprising. What is, uh, what is that? Uh, Tron Uprising. It is an American animated series from 2012. There was one season. Okay. IMDb, it's 8.2 out of 10 on IMDb. That's very good. I've cool. never heard of this. Chat, how do we feel about Tron Uprising? 
Elijah Wood was in it. Well, that's another good point. M. Night Shyamalan, like, no matter how many bad films he makes, Unbreakable is a good film. That is never. How many times have we talked about Mike Flanagan and his endings? <laughs> his last episode. Yeah, because uh, you we could love him to death, but those last episodes. You could, you could listen worried. to us like rant for hours on end about his like final episode, and they're like, "So you you don't even? I'm guessing you guys ain't gonna watch his next thing." We're like, "Oh fuck it, we're gonna watch the shit out anything of it." Anything he touch, anything he touches, <laughs> we're guaranteed to watch it. Very happy to. It's just never heard of it. Watch Beast Wars instead. Never heard of it. Hmm. I remember Beast Wars. Your cute and cuddly animal of the day is the Whip Scorpion. The Whip Scorpion, hmm. eh? Whip Scorpion. I don't know if this is oh, cute these and guys. cuddly. These aren't, these aren't really cute and cuddly at all. These are the opposite. These are monstrous love crafty and horrors. Yeah, from if there dimension. was an opposite to cute and cuddly, I feel this definitely is, is safely in there, you know? Yeah. What have you got to say about this guy, Fringy? What would what would you? Uh, he's, he's he's a little bit scary. Yeah, he's a bit scary. I mean, he's probably still just doing his thing, right? Yeah. He is doing his thing, just hanging out. <laughs> but these are the so these are the kinds of critters that if I were just walking around in my place and I happened to see this, it would freak me the fuck out. Uh, I would just burn the house down <laughs> and live somewhere else. It's the apparently kind of... they are they're 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 completely harmless. They can't do anything to you. They're just terrifying to look at. That's what I mean. Like <laughs> that makes me just think about human nature because it's like, is it the fact that they have so many moving parts that we can't necessarily account for? And we just don't too much unknown about it, and so it's just like stay the fuck away sort of thing. Yeah, in the sense that it's almost scarier to see that than it would be to see like a grizzly bear. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> yeah, for some yeah, reason. Like, I feel like the, the grizzly bear and I were operating in the same realm, you yeah, know? We're, we're like, both mammals, we're both on like, Earth, we're mammals, you got a head, you got a, two arms, two legs, you hang around, you yeah. eat honey, nice. I, yeah, it, great, it's awesome, things are, things are cool, you know? But this like, thing, it's just a different world. The world of insects is just a different world than ours. It's a scary world, it's not it's a, a kind scary, world. It's a scary, terrifying world. With no mercy and all pain. Yeah, pretty much. It's uh, jeez. Oh, 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 can we? Kind of explains um. It's from the Discord chat. <laughs> no. You can scroll up. No, that's you have to. This uh, is the right, scroll up. This, this is work. Or I'll just post cuddly pictures of like red pandas or something, <laughs> or like uh, like a fox or a um. Phil explains face huggers, by the way, raccoon. because the face huggers like kind of looks, you know, in the same realm as these sorts of things, and then it does, like, the most horrifying thing possible. It skitters around until it jumps on you, and then wraps itself around you to the point where if you try and get it off, it'll bleed acid all over you, and if you let it do its thing, it fucking puts an egg in your stomach that kills you. They know what they were doing when they were designing that, you know? In terms of oh, escape okay, action. Look at, look at that raccoon. Look at him go. Raccoon? <laughs> yeah, oh, same. yeah. What's he got? Yeah, he's got something. Yeah. This is He's much got nicer. Something. Then we got like a little, another little raccoon just hanging out. We're 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 removing the uh the <laughs> from the timeline. Aww. Look at him. Look at him go. So oh, yeah, you got the right. you got stoats. I mean, like, I'll always pull out the stoat. Yeah, they're, they're, look look at him. <laughs> He's just hanging out in the snow. Cute and safe. <laughs> that's that's what. Yeah. That... The nice, happy animals. Uh, this movie is the end result you get when you boost the confidence of little American girls with notorious RGB, RBG. I'm the doctor. Yes, queen, girl, bossery. Is that, is that English to you guys? Or I, I recognize no, the I, words. I, I um. Yeah, I got it. Alrighty. I'm just not very familiar with it. Yeah, I just... Yeah, In sorry. phase five, Tony will be resurrected. His movie will be about him going to Pepper and saying, I love you 3000 in every universe. You made me a genius philanthropist avenger that saved the world. It was always you. And then you'll tell his daughter she's smart, funny, wise, and valid. 
yeah, and then Thought will become Iron Woman, and they'll both fire a laser. His laser will do 10 damage, and hers will do 15. It'll be like, whoa, nice. She is so powerful and amazing. It'd be great. So unfortunate that zero of the millions of universes Doctor Strange saw in Infinity War included either the Book of Vashanti, the Dark Hold, since he didn't read the Sorcerer Supreme book, or Eternity, which he could have unlocked with Mjolnir. Yeah, I know, it's, it's so weird. Sometimes you wonder, like, did they just put these things in recently or something? I don't know. Hmm. I'm a little suspicious, I think. What's our streak of movies where it's legitimately, um... Like they they've just added things every movie super powerful things that they've just added at the end is there a um so love and thunder M O M what what a Moon Knight would 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 Moon Knight count or are we doing movies only? But Shang Chi's Ten we Rings could... are like insanely powerful as well, but I don't know if they count. We've got yeah, we have the Ring People. We have there isn't there like that uh the, the where do they go to? Do they go to the different realm in that movie or something? Yeah, there's like a whole a other different... dimension or some shit going on there. I don't even remember what that was, exactly. Uh, I, I, uh, let me see. Because we had, and, the, and then what's after that? Moon Knight had the, the Egyptian gods are real, and they have the ability to, like, suck the souls out of everyone on the planet. Yeah, That's pretty big. Yeah. Dude, this is the thing I was thinking about, right? If, like, you know when Thor comes back to do Jane's cancer scene in, in Love and Thunder... Imagine a portal opens, and in comes in Doctor Strange, and he's like, Dude, uh, we're at Camotage, we're preparing a defense, we need you right now. And he's like, yeah, that's that's great, but I'm trying to stop a guy from killing all the gods. And then Doctor Strange's like, yeah, I don't care, I'm trying to stop someone from destroying the entire multiverse. That includes the gods, so you're coming with me. And Thor's like, no, I I'm too busy. And then fucking Moon Knight bursts through the roof, and he's like, I need you both right now. And he's like, whoa, why, what? And he's like, uh, Amit is about to be resurrected, and they're gonna suck the souls out of everyone on Earth. And they're like... Doctor Strange's like, sorry, I trump this. I've got they're gonna destroy the multi but I need both of you actually to do to do that. I'll help you with your thing. You guys gotta kill Scarlet Witch first, okay? And then like How does anybody live in the Marvel like How does anyone life? live? <laughs> <laughs> how does anyone not die a million just times? A moment, you could just be succumbing to a world ending threat. Like, how is this world even I can't Listen. imagine what economy is like <laughs> things were Stocks going things up were and nice and yeah. things were easy everything was able to be understood life was simple and fine and then like around 2012 shit just fucking got yeah. real and now yeah. everything is trying to destroy the universe and the fabric of reality itself and everyone's getting their souls sucked out it's like man can we go back to like the 50s <laughs> and <laughs> see that would make that would make for one of the best fucking movies in the mcu ever if you had that guy who keeps he's just that one unlucky guy who ends up in a lot of the main sort of fight scenes for these movies and like the you know we're coming to the third act and he's like that's it i'm taking a vacation to egypt i'm pretty sure nothing fucking goes on there <laughs> and, you know he, he sees like the whole skyline going fucking insane and he's like oh god and then you know he, he's like i just can't handle any more stuff to like drink to get away from the pain and then his soul starts getting sucked out and he's like why is this happening what is happening to me <laughs> So he goes thank fight. god finally it's over and he wants to die and then it gets stopped <laughs> Dude, imagine, like... And we have our Incredibles moment where he sues Moon Knight. He's like, I wanted to die. <laughs> you ruined my death. Uh, what if Doctor Strange portaled gore from eternity onto Cabotage when Scarlet Witch attacked and pointed at her and went, that's a god, kill her. And gore is yeah. like, what the hell? What's this? And then she's like, what are you? And he's like, I, I don't even... What's the, uh... All right, can we pause? And he puts his hands up with a T, and he's like, "No, can we pause so we find out what the fuck's happening in this universe right now?" And then, like, they show Gore to her temple. And it's like, "See, people worship her. She's a god." He's like, "All right, fine, I'll try and kill her." And then she's like, "I want to see my kids." And then they have a, a big old epic battle. The most like, I wanted to see my kid, but you killed him. <sighs> so much stuff going on all at once. Still, I'm amused by the idea of that scene with. with Doc Strange comes back for like a, an Avengers meeting. He's just like, yeah, Wanda nearly destroyed everything just now, but that's fine. Don't worry about it. What happened to her? Oh, a building fell on her. She dead? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. You hate to see it. 
so sad about it. I'm so torn up. Like, um, nothing's off the table. They could just have a, like, her soul got rescued at the last moment by some ancient creature who wanted to, it's just, everything's on the table. It's all madness. It's all absolute madness. Most appropriate, appropriately named movie ever. Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, absolute fucking madness. Not the kind no one knows that anything. they thought they were doing. Yeah. Uh, Ragnarok had one of the best scenes in the MCU, Odin's death. If it was in this, Thor would have screamed, grabbed a jar of Odin dust. Oh, it doesn't have anything else. That's all it says. Um, they I'm might sure have... it would have been very funny. Either of you guys seen Big Lebowski? I haven't, actually. There is a scene regarding... Chat knows what I'm talking about. Still have seen it, but... I think Taika would have done a joke like that if it were in Thor Love and Thunder, and it would have been incredibly in a, in a fucking appropriate. Um... So I will say, I appreciate uh, Odin's death scene uh, for a lot of the dialogue, but I actually probably prefer the scene where he's given Thor his, um, his second wind and what he tells him in that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I really like in Ragnarok that's not jokes. Pity yep. about uh, Love and Thunder. <laughs> yeah. It's like Disney and Marvel are trying to turn men gay or asexual by making them hate women because the chemicals in the water weren't working fast enough. Um, Thor still is, is all over the ladies. In fact, you could say he's he's a bit simpy in this one, right? Like, I, 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 he wants, and they even say he goes on like adventures, fucking pirates and stuff. I don't know. It's definitely not. I don't think I noticed anything like that in this. Um, I just, I just wish that they had some clue as to what character they were writing. I don't know. I would rather watch the Asylum's rip-off Thor movie than this one. It's probably better. If they made one. <laughs> That's the thing, man. They got an opportunity, you know? Imagine the rip-off movie they hired someone who's, like, vaguely good at writing. And they're like, yeah. wait a minute, this is... People like this? That wasn't the point. It was supposed to just, you know, be bought accidentally. And it's like, yeah, but people are buying it on purpose now. This is so funny that there's an economy of selling people things that they accidentally, like, people accidentally buying your movie. Yeah. Transmorphers. <laughs> <laughs> Such a joke. <laughs> Welcome back from Japan, Rags. Sam Hyde and Kojima. Hello. Alright, yeah. Uh, did anyone else find themselves rooting for Gore? A little bit. Uh, I just, I knew, I, when he was, when he almost killed Valkyrie, I was like, yes, and then it didn't do anything, uh, so. No point in ruin for the villains, they always lose. <laughs> I don't like that I'm say that as if that's, that's because of Marvel's sludge face, not because that's just how things work usually. Um, except for Thor, nearly all the gods are awful, didn't even want to self-preserve to protect their own people from Thanos or even provide water. Yeah, that's what this film pr said, and then it'll also just simultaneously say, like, oh no, that god was really good, that one was really good, Gore killed all the nice ones. Like, okay. But what is he trying to say? What does he mean by this? Bringing, in your opinion, what are the main differences between Thor, Love and Thunder and Shaun of the Dead? I, <laughs> I know, right? Interesting. That's a... Uh, well, I mean, yeah, one of the biggest differences between Shaun of the Dead and Thor Love and Thunder is that there's a deliberateness with regard to the characters in Shaun of the Dead. Like a <gasps> very clear arc that Shaun is sent on. Um, propped up by a lot of great scenes where the comedy is in service of the character and plot rather than almost being treated as like totally separate from it. Like you can do whatever jokes you want. I'm not even like... The differences are so substantial that I'm not even sure what I meant to say. Like, one of them is a good movie, and the other one yeah. isn't. Uh, Shaun of the Dead is one of the top tier examples of a combo of genre, as well as just a, it's yeah. just one of the best films. It's it's in the uh, that echelon. It's really fucking good. It's one of the best films, for sure. Sounds like this movie has a lot of setups that don't make sense without the punchline. Are there? Is that a thing that we've, we noticed, or...? I don't know. Could be an example of in that. In the sense that, um, let me see. I I guess it would be if if you took out all of the interactions and things that people do, but you didn't have that part at the end, that punchline at the end, it would just be bizarre conversations people have. 
possibly like the only like, reason people say these very strange things is because it's trying to set up a punchline to come like a joke that's coming later sort of thing that, that's definitely possible I, I couldn't i remember us just thinking like it was just you know like when he says um you know we'll we'll come back and we'll feast not on the children like it's just something he wouldn't say this mistake never would have been made but it's all because like oh wait 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 there's a joke there's a joke coming yeah. here it comes yeah, I think, you know, that's probably right. There's a lot of that, actually, that's determining the uh, dialogue. Are we sh lol, Necrosword, are we sure his name isn't Shadow? Necrosword is kind of, you know. Necrosword is up there. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely an edgy territory. Just saw a comment by Taika explicitly saying he doesn't care about in-universe canon and does stuff to make comic fans mad. Way to go, MCU. Yeah, uh, and I I think that's a really bad work ethic, and it's it's showing, you know. Mm. Like what what else can you say? Like, um, is it would you, it's like would you say is there a way to make a good movie that disrespects continuity? It's like, uh, I guess it would just have to be the specific nature of what you're disrespecting. He's um because he it was this Ragnarok was the one that we talked about a lot for did it. Uh, retcon Thor's character, and if it did, could it be said that it was a good choice because of what it did to change him? It's, uh, there's a complicated discussion there. There's no complicated discussion with Love and Thunder. It shits on itself, by the way, plenty of times. So, like, I don't know, maybe you should take Tiger's words to mean he literally doesn't respect the concept of continuity, not even his own. Let alone, like, comic source or MCU. Which is an approach, you know? Been recommended. So I work at a theater, and there was a Thor showing with only like eight people in it on opening day. It's still busy and all, but it speaks volumes. Well, yeah, because the film now is probably only going to make a bit, well only seven hundred million, but it's lower than Ragnarok probably. You reckon Which... that in total? Seven hundred million. Uh, well, yeah, it's only made again only. <laughs> like, no, I understand. It's all got to be relative Marvel numbers. I think Thor: Love and Thunder just crossed like six hundred million worldwide. Does that? Confirm that Doctor Strange is more of a draw than Thor now, or not? Well, yeah, yeah, because Thor: Love and Thunder, the box office right now is six hundred and one million. By the end of its run, I think Doctor Strange was like nine hundred million, so it will make more money than Thor. Um, and it may well be that Thor makes less money than Ragnarok, which that can't be good, right? Like that can't be a good sign. Or well, maybe do you think we have the TLJ I, effect? We'll see. Um, I think we still need more stinkers in a row because Marvel's so fucking big. Oh, well, I, I guess it would be more so that they'd be like, hmm, it made less money than the last one. Well, you know, um, like what that's... I assume Rags is talking about is where they hesitate to bring films out. I don't think Marvel going to do that oh, yeah, for a while. Well, I was I... talking about like a film is it, it sort of it, a film comes out and after it, people are hesitant to watch the next one. Um, um, so the difference I, there I is this bad word of mouth on this film would be, I think that would explain it. And the Marvel okay. or the MCU rather is almost like they're running several IPs at once, even though the irony there is that TLJ cost would have helped to cost, uh, Solo's audience, even though they're disconnected entirely, like storyline wise. Um, but I, I guess what I'm saying is like, if you see a movie like Doctor Strange and go, Ooh, that was really bad. Hey, that, Ooh, and then. Guardians 3 comes out, and by the way, this applies to us, we'll be like, yeah, that's not indicative of how good Guardians 3 will be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, I think Marvel benefits from that quite a bit, and uh, that's why it's going to take a lot of them failing badly at once. And then I could see someone Marvel being like... Marvel benefits a lot from an MCU being disconnected. Yeah, and... and Odd as that sentence is. Funnily enough, like, if Guardians 3 is really good... That'll be like a fucking godsend for the MCU at this point. Because they need a film that people can be like genuinely talking about how good it was. They need a film that people really like rather than a film that they like. They tolerate. For a weeks <laughs> and then they turn against pretty quick. Um, I imagine Metal's face totally different from reality. Any anecdotes on dissonance of finding out what people look like after only knowing them by their icons and voices? Uh. I think most people felt that way with Total Biscuit, but like I don't care that much in general. Uh, you, I think it's it's rare. Like, how often would you build a image in your head of how someone would look from a voice and it would match? 
Like that's probably rarer than the opposite, never right? Never really. Yeah, yeah, I just never really do that. So in that case, like it, it doesn't get me to the point where I'm like, whoa, they look like that. I'll just be like, they could literally look like anything. And so if I ever about to find out, I'm like, oh, that's it. Okay. I just, I've always imagined that you look like your icon right here. Mm -hmm. Ever since the first day, yeah, yeah. I, I heard your voice. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that's what he looks. Well, like. I've said yeah. before, I do like the color blue. Big fan. Quite cool. Yeah, the black eye, the red eye. <laughs> you know, it it's like filters that you see the world through, you mm -hmm. know, so you don't miss anything. The gas mask because uh, um, you're horrifically flatulent. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't want to breathe the toxicness of this world directly. You know? Whales. Yeah. <laughs> Our air is just not clean. Uh, Taika is unironically like Gore's god. He's got nothing to offer, so he just trashes people like an untitled, entitled, entitled, insecure, rich, mean-spirited, classless hack. Which is something you can get away with if you're making something people enjoy. But if you make something people hate... It's kind of like, um, we saw this before, don't be smug if you're wrong. <laughs> like, I know that yeah. that seems redundant, it's like, well, yeah. Yeah, you want to save, you want to save that smugness, you know, for when you really, when you've really got it, Absolutely and it's just so. icing on the cake. Yeah. That's when you want to save it, just to drive the point home. You want to keep, it's a, if you're always smug, then you're just a smug person. Or you're, you're, or it doesn't, it's like people who swear way too much. Mm. When they swear all the time, their swears sort of lose value. That's how you want to have smugness be. I find, yeah, I find that to be very true. And I often, um, when redrafting, I'm like, ah, oh, there's, there's a fuck there. But I used one like three sentences ago. I wonder if I was to remove one of these, it actually makes the remaining one hit more. And usually it does. Um... That's just how words work, I guess, right? Their punch is reliant on the fact that they're not used often. Um, a lot of the normal words we use in the connected ones, they're not supposed to have a punch, but... If I called everybody, yeah. you know, a piss baby, maybe the first few would be kind of funny, but then the rest would be like, yeah, you always do that, I don't care. Yeah, like, we know it means that it's a bad thing, like, it's an insult, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really have any... You know, your your spectrum. It's hard to gauge what the spectrum is, and this has been this has been kind of our issue with all these bad you know shows and movies that are coming out is that they're all so terrible. How many times can you say something's terrible before you think about, gosh, is that just word losing its meaning? Like even that basic word. Yeah, um, and there's still there's people who are like, I don't know, it does seem unlikely, right, that they're all this bad that you're saying this every time. And it's just like, well, we've got our workings hour hour hours of long streams with all our arguments and references so hopefully it's still understandable and we're waiting for that that time we go this mcu was actually not piss how about that and guardians 3 really could be it the latest thing i've heard about that apparently is unlike the first two it's it's not going to be as light-hearted according to james gunn we're, we're looking at a darker oh. movie apparently mm. but we'll hmm. see about that also we I will need to see go source something out quick i should be like Five minutes, you guys. Uh, you guys, you just talk about oh, boy. You know, whatever it is you want to. All right. I wonder what it is that he's um, sorting out. Who knows what it could be? He probably. They, they probably heard me saying that thing about the Welsh air. Someone in the back was like, "Oh, Molly, is he talking about the Welsh air? <laughs> You've been talking about. We've got lovely air." And, and what would be the difference time, between man. the Welsh air and the uh, Welsh air versus um? Uh, like British air, you'd feel like. Where is the dividing line? Is it strictly oh, along the border? It's. I don't think so. It's just it's a mixture in the middle, and the winds might sort of change. Maybe one. You know, it's a little back and forth, and you know, not mm -hmm. as strong. But maybe it's. I don't know what. Maybe it's something in the. Something in the like they have. What is it? Old Faithful is like a geyser. Do you have one? Do they have one of those for gas? Does the earth just <laughs> fart up stuff? Where every once in a while, Old Faithful, and it just sort of comes up. Or maybe it's all the sheep. Or what else is what else is whales known for? Let me Google it. Uh, what is whales? Sheep known for? is the main one. Um, it says here on HeyExplorer.com that Wales is famous for its stunning scenery, ancient history, and charming language. That's a nice thing to call it. A charming language. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's got a, a certain charm, doesn't it? Yeah, it, I... I uh, uh, 
I can give you some, it has five interesting facts about whales here. If you want to get some whale facts. So fact number one is they eat krill. Oh, wait, sorry. That was the wrong whale. Sorry. Uh, first one is whales is a part of the United Kingdom. That's a very interesting and fun fact. That's very fun. Uh, mm -hmm. The capital city of Wales is Cardiff. Also very fun. Uh, is, the that population... fun or is that just normal? You know? Um, well, it's it says here, I have it on good authority, that these are quick fire fun facts about whales. Um, so they, they must be they must be fun. Uh, po uh, let's see, the population of whales is three point one three six million, which is let me look at my state's uh, Arkansas population. That is all, that's about as many people as in uh, Arkansas, and we are not a populous state. So, yeah, we're just behind uh, Wales when it comes to population. We're about 100,000 behind. Interesting. That's kind of interesting, yeah. Yeah. I'm not uh, sure what other fun see. facts it would really be about Wales. Oh, I've got, I'm glad you asked, because I've got three more, even though it said five. Oh, right. I've got at least six. All right. Wales is roughly 20,800 square kilometers. Wow. How, that, that's really, that's pretty fun. To, though? That's kind of the... Um, let me look up whales on a map because I want to get my scale. I'm a more visual guy, so let me take a look at whales. Uh, I'm gonna have to zoom out further so that I could sort of get a okay. So, this is gonna help. I'll copy and I'll paste. So, that is whales in comparison to the rest of everything okay well that's, that's well, so well i guess what i meant is like what is the uh the the square you know like the square miles if you compare it to another country because the fun fact i know is that uh the united kingdom is about the size of victoria which is one of our smallest states you know what this will be fun for you rags our largest state is western australia i wonder how much bigger it is than texas I imagine you've got how many states do you have? We have six states and two territories. That is, I bet some of those states are. I bet, I bet some of them are pretty big. If if you've well, got so all that area to spread out. Okay, so West Texas is apparently 0.28 times as big as Western Australia. So Western Australia, maybe it'll help if I just get you the actual size. Western Australia is 33 percent of Australia. That's the size. It's a big it chunk of land. I went to a so map the total, here. The total land area is two million five hundred and seventy-two thousand uh, and thirteen square kilometers, and the capital city Perth is the most uh, remote, like major city in the world. I believe in terms of how long it takes to get anywhere else. Or I think over a million. I think it's the most isolated city over a million uh, in population. Don't forget hmm. Alaska. Uh, it's bigger than Alaska. Um, the the reason why Alaska we we've have we talked about this before. You know those maps that like stretch out north and south big time to where like Africa is smaller than Greenland, even though Africa is like fucking the second largest continent in the world. Africa is chongus, but like a lot of people don't realize that. Oh, what's the population yeah, it, density of uh what's the population density of Western Australia? Um it is one person per square kilometer. Oh nice, <laughs> nice and nice and roomy. <laughs> well, wow, because the average for Australia is I think two point seven, because everybody knows this right, but like seventy five percent of Australians live on the east coast. Um and the proportion of it was something I, I remember I I think even as a kid, I started to realize it. You look at a lot of other countries, or hell, you look at America. Like, yeah, New York is a really big city, but New York has like a lot, or not New York, America has a lot of like mid sized cities. You know, like there's, you've got the Chongus big cities, but then you've also got a lot of like 500,000, 400,000 people cities. We don't have many of those. Um, it, we've mainly got our capital cities for like each state. And then. Elsewhere, it's like you got Wollongong and, and Newcastle and stuff, and then that's it. And then everything else is like a pretty small town. Most people in most states live in the major cities. Or the major city, the capital. Our uh, population is not very spread out. Mm. 
And so it means that if you go on a drive through the country, of which I've done so many, many times, you'll just have a nice long stretch of, like, fuck nothing <laughs> just for ages. Um, rural cities like Bendigo and Ballarat, yeah, but they're, they're reasonably small compared to, like, I guess what you would call, like, middle cities in America, like, I don't know, Sacramento or... Uh, I I don't know why I always go to Boise, considering I can never pronounce it. <laughs> Is it Boise? 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 I don't actually. I think it's Boise because there's yeah. a Boise state, but I'm not. I'm legitimately not sure. Bendigo is a town, really? Yes, we need to go to Bendigo to get me green cube. Yeah, Bendigo is real. <laughs> Bendigo is real. Is the green cube I'm glad real? That that I'm glad that cartoon came out and really put Bendigo on the map. You know? yeah. Well, I remember, I've mentioned it before, but if you turn on the subtitles for that, when they go to the petrol station, um, he says, get a paddle pop. Paddle pop is a, uh, it's, it's a ice cream. Um, okay. It's paddle pop, but the, uh, the subtitles say paddle pop because they, they got their Australian reference a little bit wrong. I remember I noticed that, and it's like, damn, you were so close to having it just perfect. But you didn't. But that's okay, because you had a lot of other fun stuff in there. You mean the servo? No, I just call it a petrol station, but some people call it a servo. Do you want to know some cringe? I, yeah, I would love right. to know some cringe. Sit down. That's why my, I'm here. Unfortunately, <laughs> my, my live stream control center, whatever, it, it said, uh, maxed out my RAM or whatever and went blank, so to refresh, it was annoying, but whatever. I, I think it's, I have too many tabs, that's my bad. But, reload it, and like, everything's normal, except this this annoying notification that says, Hey, now would be a good time to insert ads. Creators earn more money inserting ads. More viewers are watching right now. Give it a try. It's like... Did Fuck you? off! <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just like oh, I just find it peer pressure. No, I just find it so cringy. Like, like as if you don't know. It's like you probably didn't know. You can make more money if you press this button. Do it now. Please make more money for us. Yeah, no, that's it's just like why don't you be honest with me, YouTube? You just want me to do it so you get you get more coins. All right, that's it. Thanos... See, I guess, yeah, just, they, fr they frame it as you making more money, which you are, but it's also like, please make more money for us mm -hmm. as well. We, if you don't make money, then, I mean, we could still make money without you making money, uh, but, you know, we get a chunk of what you make. I should put five unskippable 30-second ads on right now. I love how uh, that seems almost unreal to me, and yet we had a guest on who was like, what do you mean, that's normal? <laughs> All right, no problem. That was an inter That was an interesting conversation. <laughs> I d I think what was so amusing about it was like I, I don't think he's encountered people like us before. <laughs> so he thought we were like aliens in terms of just, bro. Five second ad unskippable is already enough. Okay, leave it there. Uh, and my videos are long. I will typically make them at the beginning and end of a video. Skippable ads. That seems decent. I'm willing to agree. Are long, so, we're yeah. drawing like an arbitrary line and everything. But still, it's what feels right. Um, I don't. I couldn't. Well, like, really you, objectively uh, quantify something, but the, it, it's the sort of thing where I'd be like, "Yeah, this feels fair." I definitely don't want to annoy someone, but you know, after an hour-long video, if you get a skippable ad at the front and then one when it wraps up, which most people are not going to get to anyway, just because of the nature of YouTube and videos, I think that's totally fine. Yeah, I think so too. I uh, could probably go way harder, and it'd be fine. You I could just well don't annoy people. We're even. I'm pretty sure all three of us are on this this boat. But being like, when someone's like, you know, make sure you don't mention ad block. You would want to just like, no, 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 no. Use it if you want to <laughs> go right ahead. I I cannot fault anyone for using ad block because I've used it for years. I totally understand. I I mean, I totally yeah. I mean, that's the thing, man. Ad block is it's nice. It really is. But it's the I mean, given, if giving $1 a month to a creator, I don't even, I can't even imagine how many ads you'd have to watch to add up to a dollar's worth of ad revenue. That was a great um, meme. Yeah, turn off that pesky ad block. Turn off that pesky ad block. I'm like, oh, I, I get why you guys have it. I do. <laughs> I've got it on. Ads suck. I get it. Especially nowadays with the sponsorships and stuff. Mm. I, um, someone was sharing around, uh, some of the channels I'm in a Discord, they were sharing around the sponsor block edition for YouTube where it's like senses 
it, it can tell Sense where the sponsor sponsorship. thing is and it skips it or something and i'm wow. like i don't know i don't know if i'm i'm not going to go that far i'm not going to I mean, skip i wouldn't trust it it might skip something i wanted to see so or if they yeah or if they wanted to do a, if, if there was something personalized about the sponsorship or Something like that. As, just... Well, as people know on EFAB, we watch those sponsorships, right? We see they are they are to be reviewed in terms of their effectiveness, efficiency. We've seen ads we thought were good, right? Was it Brown Table that did one we thought was good? Yeah, he did one for yeah, like, he did wine the one for the wine. Yeah, yeah, he is the drinks, the mixed drinks. Yeah, he did that one, and he was actually in it, and he made some drinks, and he showed Looked his like he kitchen. Kid. Or his parents' kitchen, I guess, or whatever. And he was doing his thing. Yeah, and it was he cared. He clearly cared. Um, and plus, I mean, whenever we watch a sponsorship thing, we almost always have things to talk about. <laughs> I mean, some oh, yeah. of them are funny because Good of how silly they are. Yeah, Noom. But I, I don't want to get into the idea that I guess I want to temper myself in that I don't want to put myself in the mindset of I just, just, you know, gimme, 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 gimme. And if there's anything that interrupts that in any way, be it a sponsorship or an ad, that I just have to find ways to just skip it. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to go down that road. Like skipping ads, those are clearly meta things that are outside of the video that I'm watching. But to get to the point where I'm trying to skip the sponsorship inside of the video that the creator put there, I, I feel like that's a different line to cross. You know, so it's kind of contextual I don't want to spoil myself. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't get a like, fucking you know, app I'm, for it or an extension, or whatever. Yeah, I wouldn't do if that. I'm skipping it. I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. There's an element of all of this stuff. I am. I'm getting an insane amount of entertainment for virtually free that I never have been, had access to ever. So maybe I should. Yeah, these whippersnappers don't know how good they got it back in the day. You have to you have to find out when the thing is on, tune in, and then you have to deal with annoying breaks that play fifteen fucking years of ads, and and you have to hit pause on your recording device so that when you rewatch it later, it skips the ads on your VHS collection, making your own TV show box sets. You don't know how hard it was. I wonder how many people this would be. I would legitimately wish if I could ask the wizard to give me a real number here. I would love that. I'm really interested to know what percentage of our audience has never watched a movie on television. When you say on television, do you mean like terrestrial sort of yeah, channels with, rather with than on a channel? Yeah. A movie is scheduled to play. You can sit down, watch it. There are commercial breaks throughout it. I would also like. I wonder how many a percentage yeah. for how many of them haven't watched a movie on VHS. Those would both be numbers I'd be interested in seeing because one of those is just being phased out. They're being phased out in different ways. Mm -hmm. So I would be interested. I, I yeah, I'd I'd be I'd be curious because I bet they're there in our audience. People who've never sat down on terrestrial TV and watched a movie start to finish with all the ad breaks and everything there. And boy, let me tell you, sometimes uh, every once in a while, my dad will, or and he'll tell me, man. I was I tried to watch this movie the other day, and it was just so many commercials. It was maddening. It was so frustrating. There were so many commercials. I guess they have to pack them so thick these days. But, oh, man, sounds terrible. All right, I, I even put a poll up. Okay, there you go. I could have got to imagine there are many people in the audience who are like VHS. What does that stand for? What is that? It's the joke thing that we talk about, but it was real. It it was legit. It was a real thing. You had these blo these plastic blocks with a spool of film inside of it, and it would spin, and it would go through the Magic VCR player, and somehow it would translate that little black tape into sound and video. And then at the end, you'd have to remember to rewind it so the next time it was put in the machine, it didn't start at the end. VHS quality that got really bad. That was just how you did everything. I didn't miss it. Yeah. VHS was that 480p? Uh, it's probably. Let me VHS. Resolution. I think DVD was 480p. I thought DVD was 720. I think, VHS I DVD was... is um dimensions. Do, 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 do. DVD is 480. Really? <clears throat> yeah. I've read a lot of Blu-ray is high definition. A VHS tape has a resolution of. 
300 by 360 pixels in TSC. So if you capture it in 720, I, yeah, this is a different, uh, I guess that's for recording and stuff. Uh, oh, the quality of VHS tape. Yeah, if you, do, if you want to carry on while I sort of do a little bit of looking into this, go for it. But I'm kind of, uh, um, because I know they get shat on for bad quality. I'm curious how much of that bad quality is typical or how much of it is, you know, if it was really that bad, I'm just. So let me give you someone posted this. It came with two images and I will post this image. So this is. A comparison someone's making between VHS DVD and Blu-ray. But I don't know. That doesn't that seems like it's worse than I remember, but I think DVD mm. is worse than you remember. DVD yeah, I remember so. my DVD I've still got DVD folders and files and stuff that I used back in the day and I every once in a while I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> like <laughs> um, Yeah. And people still buy DVDs, they don't buy Blu-rays, a lot of people. Oh, dude, my my dad is still at the point where he's like, I don't need to watch them Blu-rays, and I'm like, I need to these days. If, uh... Yeah. I, it's hard I'm to... I'm supposed to this. DVDs are blurry. <laughs> yeah, it's been so long since I've even, like, seen it, you know? Yeah. Uh, but... It's kind of like if I was to go back and play on a console, I'd be like, fucking hell, I can't believe I did this for years and years. So, was 720 skipped? Because I thought Blu-ray was 1080, and then UHD is 4K, right? Well, because 720 is, like, HD, but it's not full so it's, HD. Yeah. Full HD is 1080. So, like, 720p is part of the high-definition range. Well, like, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it, isn't it literally relative in that 720 probably was HD, but now it's not? I no, I think I think 1080p was full HD, and then 720 was like another type of HD. I think it jumped up to. Oh, I I could be wrong on that. Oh, well, someone said HD DVD. That might explain it. Oh, HD DVD was a thing. Maybe. Interesting to see. I, I almost like say that it was out. part of the. It was part of the logo, right? You'd have the HD and then the little disc thingy beneath it or something. Yeah, yeah, but then dude, that's a right thing that. Out. I imagine loads of people are like, what's HD DVD? And it's like, oh, gather round for a tale. And, uh, yeah. There was a fight once upon a time. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay, anyway. <laughs> Thanos having all the gods sounds hilarious. Well, like, apparently they didn't, they weren't affected by it, you know, they were fine up in, uh, yeah, they were in Omnipotent City, being chill. Imagine if the film were about Thor doing for the arrogant, indulgent gods what Odin did for arrogant young Thor, humbling and making them worthy. I don't even... The problem is I don't think that we should... Why are all the gods that way? You know? So boring. Are there no interesting gods? Are they all just like, lol, I only care about myself, who sacrificed people to me today, you know? They did. Uh, I just say just before we before it flutters into memory, um, I found a rip of the the NBC 1981 TV VHS version of Halloween 1978 versus a 4K Ultra HD version in this nifty little video I see. Um, by VHS three, and just kind of having it play is a uh, it is a stark difference. Well, if you're going from VHS to 4K, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a huge... It's not even upgrade. fair at all. <laughs> the poor yeah, just, VHS. You know, of course it's not fair. I mean, one's clearly better than the other. Yeah, no. Uh, well, because this was why it was surprising for me to see the remaster of Buffy, because what's imprinted into my head is basically the VHS versions. And so when I see, like, fucking hyper remaster and I can read what posters are on the background and stuff, I'm like, what the hell? It feels like a different thing. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff was shot so that it could have been processed into much higher resolutions. A fun, you know. Um, 
do. Uh, they learn to help people under his kingship, and Gore is shocked by this, but nah, Dr. Jane Thor and trash humor is more important. Well, yeah, and they've sp spent their, uh, their City of Gods token. They can't really do that differently now. It's, it's in stone that that's how it, how it is. Fun. That could have been the plot of an entire movie. I mean, the, the plot of a whole I mean, series of television, but, like, the fact that we just went there so, is just so matter-of-factly. Hi, oh, yeah, City of Gods. And then we were in and out just like that with zero consequences, essentially, and it, it's really wild. Got back from Thor, come and thunder. What the fuck, man? Yeah. Yeah. I get you. This movie seems like a perfect reference to the argument that adaptation fidelity does not equal quality. If the source is crap, the final product will also be crapped if you adapt it faithfully. You cut out. Um, uh, you might want to say it again. Well, it'll uh, on my end it'll be clear because it comes through OBS. But uh, so someone they they they're arguing that um this well I don't I don't see how this movie would would make this argument crystallize, but I guess I can understand. They're saying that, that this movie feels like a perfect reference to the argument that adaptation fidelity equal uh, does not equal quality because if the source is crap, the final product will also be crapped if you adapt it faithfully. Um, I agree with, with the sentiment. I just don't know why this movie would, uh, would Love and Thunder? Out. Yeah, I don't know why this movie would help you out with that. What argument. is it being adapted from, other than the a madman's mental machinations? Unless they're arguing uh, if someone was to adapt this movie into something else, they'd have crap if they did it faithfully. Because I agree with that. Yeah, it's better to... I mean, if you copy a good thing faithfully, it'll be good. If you copy a bad thing faithfully, it'll be bad. So, mm -hmm. yeah, quality's key. Yeah, it looks like we got a split of 93 to 6%. That's what it says. It should probably be 7, but yeah, all right. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, maybe there was a 1%. Uh, maybe that. Maybe they round up the decimals and sometimes, or they round the decimals to the nearest spot mm. and they just don't, so whatever. But interesting. 93%. How many of you watched a movie on VHS? I expected it to be less than that, so, you know, maybe... Honestly, I did too. I would have guessed less. I would have guessed around 85%. Hmm. Maybe they're lying to us. Who knows? Uh, I'd still put Multiverse as the worst in the MCU, but this is competing with Black Widow for second place for me. Also, High Rex. Hey! I think it beats out Black Widow because of the, uh... It has all the same problems that Black Widow has, but it also has the Thor can make everybody Thor thing. And then Mjolnir can make someone Ooh. Thor, as long as Thor says, I want you to care and protect for this person. You know, those two are huge rule changes that destroy everything Thor's been in, in the MCU up to this point. So, you know, but um, I can see why there would be uh, trouble figuring it out, though. Yeah, I think this is worse, yeah. But we're getting into the sludge when we're comparing movies mm -hmm. like this. Mola, did you know the main character in Assassin's Creed Black Flag is Walsh? I mean Welsh, but yes. Uh, vaguely. Walsh. That's Ooh, his Hizzle. name. Walsh. Walsh. <laughs> uh, yeah, more Welsh main characters. And that's what we need, okay? It'll make games really good. People like Black Flag, right? That's what made it good. Diabetes or Dementia? I'd have diabetes easily. Uh, if I'd I have choose. diabetes, of course. Dementia close. is like one of the worst things you could possibly have, and diabetes seems to be treatable to the point of you might it might not impact your life in any way whatsoever. I've had a lot of people have diabetes and they just don't know it because it doesn't impact their lives to the point where they even feel different to get it checked. Yeah, I'd say that getting dementia or anything similar to it is like nightmare scenario. Uh, it is. Of all it's the things like that could happen to you. Up there and worse. It's up there in the worst things that can happen to you. Rags, what kind of D do you have? Uh, savory. Mm -hmm. No, I got. I have the little the the. I have you know you have the the D and on the top it has here. I guess I can draw it. Um, so you have two 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 a D. But you also have the D where it's just a little bit stylized and it has the little, just a little bit at the top right there, right? 
on the right. It has that little bit at the top, almost like a little roof. Uh -huh. That's how I like my D's. I like the D's with the little, little, little big roof on top. A little, just a, just a tasteful amount of style. Just, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Almost, it's so subtle. It's almost not even a style. Uh, is Gore actually an intimidating villain or not? I'm confused. You guys are confused as well, because I can't tell even how I feel about it. Bless Christian Bale's heart for trying. Is he intimidating? I mean, it's, uh... Uh, it's hard for me to take villains seriously when they're written very poorly. It starts to break down my ability to just, I guess, believe them and be immersed in them. Yeah, and then there's but, a couple of dumb decisions here and there, especially like in his first fight where he's like taunting Thor or whatever when I didn't believe that was him at all, so it's... Yeah, and then weird. he does the whole like, oh, you go away, you know, that I'm so creepy. And I'm like, uh, you're just like, uh, you're getting clowny here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd say definitely no, didn't like... find him intimidating, but that, you know, Christian Bale did what he could with what he was given. Hollywood people think it's funny slash entertaining when sexual boundaries are broken against someone's will. Color me surprised. At least he's not a minor. Not well. I mean, they were willing to do it with Thor, but not, you know, anyone, anyone else. Rags. What if someone leaves a leaflet-sized menu for Trungos on your windshield? Oh yeah, because you were saying you don't like when people leave stuff on your windshield. Yeah. Um. Generally, menus shouldn't have this issue because most proper restaurants will, they'll like laminate menus or something like that. Um, some restaurants have, my issue with leaflets on the windows is mostly, it's not really because it's like I have to take it off and now that's a piece of trash that I have to throw away, which is essentially what flyers are. It's saying you throw this away. Um, on the windshield, if it rains or if it gets wet and it's like paper, Sometimes it sits there for a little bit in the sun or just it gets rained on. And so when you take it off, part of the paper like remains on the windshield and you have to scrape it off because it's just sort of become stuck to the glass. And it's very, very annoying because I can't just get rid of it. Plus, it's wet. So now it's wet and half of it is still stuck to the windshield. Now I have this wet trash that I have to throw away. And plus, a lot of people... When they throw them away, they literally just like they just throw them away. Literally, they just like they just chuck it and they litter because they're bad people too. And so you're you're just cre you're just making the world a worse place. You're either in no one gives a fucking shit. All right, whatever your flyers for, no one cares. All right, if they actually have a problem, they'll find you. Don't worry about it. Now. You're just making trash, and you're inconveniencing people. I bet more people, out of spite, will not contact you because of your annoying-ass flyers. Just don't. Don't do it. Don't just give me more shit and trash and clutter, and don't introduce more extra stuff that's just going to end up on the floor outside and litter. Don't tempt people <laughs> to litter your shitty leaflets. No. But I hope that answered the question. Yeah, um, I'm I forgot sure. about it halfway. Um, right. A neat animal is the lightning bug. We've had this one before, haven't we? Well, that's what we call fireflies here. Or that's one of the names for fireflies here. Mm. Um, lightning bugs. Uh, but yeah, they are neat. Yeah, they got those little red parts and the black wings, and they uh, fly around and they uh, they light up. Yeah. Pretty nifty. They're neat. Deals more damage, you say? Loki took all free will. Not sure what that means, but all right. Uh, Flamingo number 492, a.k.a. Pink Floyd, has been a fugitive on the run for the past 17 years. Also, hi, Rex. Hello. Is that a fart? <laughs> no. Sounded like one, but you never know. That was definitely, I have RTX voice on. It couldn't have been a fart. Well, things could get through, you know? That yeah. is madness. That couldn't possibly madness. be the case. I don't know why I'm even laughing, because it was just the way that my chair, chair uh, yeah. squeaked yeah. when I turned it. Yeah. 
Um, the only acceptable crying at Meteor is a single manly tear that you ignore because to wipe it away would diminish it. Yes. That is the Chad cry. Read Sylveon's X and Y Pokedex entries, then compare it with Sun and Moon's ones. Look how they massacred my boy. Well, oh. let me go to Pokemon db.net which lists all sorry that's not pokemon db.net it is um god i forgot the name of the website uh pokedo pokedex where it is do to do, do i forgot the name of the site is it pulpapedia um it I'm is sure. okay so it's compare x and y to Sun and Moon? Is that what it said? Uh, I posted what Oh, here said. it is. You X, and X and Y. Okay, so an X. Here are the X and Y entries. It sends a soothing aura from its ribbon-like feelers to calm fights. It wraps its ribbon-like feelers around the arm of its beloved trainer and walks with him or her. Um, and we're comparing this with Sun and Moon. All right. Its ribbon-like feelers give off an aura that weakens hostility in its prey, causing them to let down their guard. Then it attacks. And in Moon, when this Pokemon sights its prey, it swirls its ribbon-like feelers as a distraction. A moment later, it pounces. The first two entries would explain all of the art that's done of it but it's strange it, it does seem darker right like pokemon seems like it's gotten darker like it's trying to be more serious well, maybe it's like almost like it's trying to catch up with the ages of people who play it you know as they get older it wants to get more older with them and more mature with them it's like they're maybe aware of the meme value and they're trying to lean into it now or something i don't know because i never knew them to be this kind of funny in terms of shocking some of them are but uh yeah some of them some of these Pokemon are legit evil forces of nature that need to be eradicated for the safety of the, the world. Mm -hmm. And they're played off as just normal things you go out and catch and have fun with. Don't tell me that 10-year-olds get to control these things. There's no fucking way. Inspired by your Obi-Wan content, I watched the despecialized versions of the OT. I haven't seen the original cuts since my early childhood. Good rat. Way better than the special editions. Hell yeah. Despecialized are the way to go. Hello, fappers. Hi, rags. Hello. Hello, hello. Right. Question for you. Who is your go-to romance when you play Mass Effect series? Scritches for the goodest boy. Um. Liara. Yeah, I like her. Uh, Tali. Yeah, Litton. Yeah, Not Tali. A bad choice. And <laughs> I mean, there's a bunch, I guess. Uh, but I, I don't know. I. I don't play it enough to have regulars, I suppose, but uh, Garrus, Tali, Liara up there. Unfortunately, you can't romance Rex. What a load of horse shit. <laughs> yeah. Does EFAP endorse Maybe. Thor Love and Thunder? Good film or bad film? Bad film. Very bad, Very bad film. Very bad. Avoid at all costs. Not e and, it's, and it is not so bad it's good it's just bad it's there's something there's something especially bad about a bad comedy and this is a really bad comedy it very clearly tries 100 percent to be funny and it is extremely unfunny mm. you have entertained me many years now and i have nothing witty to say so have some money also high rags Oh, hi, thanks. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Glad you enjoy. Uh, well, more on the way. Look up Guzzlord Scream by Alex Ash XYZ. It's the English version of Guzzlord's Cry, and it is one of a kind and glorious. 10 out of 10 recommend to relax. I assume this is a song? Guzzlord Scream. It's a Guzzlord Screaming. So I guess Guzzlord is a Pokemon? Oh. And it screams. Uh, 
Oh, wow. Yeah, this is... Yeah, you could watch that at your leisure. It is quite, um... Yeah. Yeah, I'm listening to some of these. Wow, ones. that's actually kind of, like... Jeez. Interesting scream it's got there. Oh my god. <laughs> Just sounds like it's the demon in pain. Yeah, it feels... It feels like a person screaming in pain. It feels like a person being tortured, which is... Like, I, thematically appropriate, but, like, uh... That's, um, that's very... Uh, hmm, it's a bit uncomfortable, but alright. Yeah, I don't want to watch this anymore. This legitimately makes me know. <laughs> Digimon of the day, Impmon. Hmm. Imp... Mon. Oh, look at him. Imp Mon. I loved Ip Man, uh, but let's let's check Imp Mon. Oh, he looks like a little shithead. You, you know what he makes like, me this you think a, of? This Holly Quinn. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, little shithead. This this is what a little shithead looks like. This right here. If you look like this, you're just a you're just a little you're just a dick. No one likes you. You have no positive characteristics. Damn. Just I know. This is just this is what a shithead looks like. What if he's like the hero of the Pokemon world or the Digimon world? And it was probably incidental. Maybe that then that's probably proof that it wasn't worth saving. Mm -hmm. If he wants it saved, then it must have been irredeemably catastrophically evil. Jay, did you know that England is your city? Well, I bet Jay didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> love your channels. Inspired my own. Keep up the good work. P.S. Lily Orchard made the most bizarre Kenobi defense vid yet. Would you check out? Uh, maybe. 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 We still need to check out Lily Orchard's like rules for writing, right? Didn't she make like 200 or something? Oh yeah, she made that big list. Yeah. They have been archived, and uh, I would that would be great for EFAP two hundred if we go through the rules. We could we could use them as little uh, almost like a uh, little milestones, yeah, or, or, you know, markers as we go through the episodes. We'll do one, then we'll do another in a little bit, and then we'll go and we'll do another, and then another, and I don't know. Maybe if we get through some of them, that'll be great. Maybe we could save the rest for later, because boy, those were. Uh, some of those rules, I couldn't tell you one off the top of my head because it's been a while, but boy, some of those were interesting. Uh, I've been told that baseball bat sabers aren't a problem because Vader tanked a shot in Empire from Luke. So, he's wearing armor. That's, 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 if stormtroopers have armor that's immune to lightsabers but not immune to blasters, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Meanwhile, if Vader was shot in the shoulder with a blaster, it wouldn't surprise me if it didn't go right through. I'm fine with um, literally the right hand man of the Empire having stronger material for his literally described as him. armor, and it still hurts him. Yeah, because yeah. lightsabers it's are still that hurt. Good. Yes, um, this was because in light they're probably at their weakest in Return of the Jedi at the beginning when he's just sort of hitting. I mean, to the credit, the show's credit, it, he hits people once and they die, but there's no like body parts falling off. But in every other encounter, when a lightsaber comes out. Things are getting chopped off. It's serious. Um, so, and you see what they do to the battle droids, man. They also, just slice straight through robots. It's worth mentioning, because now I'm thinking about it, it's like, I fucking love that bit, because it's where Vader's toying with Luke backfires finally, and then he decides he's not playing anymore and chops his fucking hand off. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. Because, um, yeah, he wants to more so talk to him, but... Um... <laughs> Vader really yeah, did spig out when he took that hit. A little bit. You can, but kill him Ooh. if you can. Yeah. Um, but even you were gonna say like, oftentimes it's still one hit. I think um, one of the people Obi Wan kills, he like he like whaps him once, then whaps him again, and both times like his lightsaber bounces off them, and it's just like, oh. yeah, it's clear he's hitting them with a prop that just seems like it's a plastic bat. And it just, it's spring, because that armor, that costume they're wearing, it's probably quite springy, because it's a plastic 
cover over that that's attached in whatever way to the butt sock beneath. And it just it's 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 almost springy. So if you hit it with plastic, it's just going to bounce and spring off. And it looks very anemic, especially considering how many times he has to hit him. He makes a show of it. And I'm like, man, that's just. God, you really should not civilized at all, quite frankly. An elegant weapon for a more civ- no. No. Was Guardians 3 supposed to come out before this movie? Wouldn't the scene of them splitting up make more sense if we saw Thor slowly changing over the span of a Guardians movie? I got no clue what the timeline would have looked like had he been able to make Guardians 3 when he was going to originally. Um, I imagine it would have come out by now. I think things have changed, have changed dramatically, much more so than we, we, we would ever realize in terms of what storylines were going to happen. Well, I mean, something that I think we know is that um, before he got fired, James Gunn was going to be like the producer in charge of the cosmic side of the MCU. Um, mm -hmm. But they've lost him by the looks of it. He's coming back to do Guardians 3 and then he's back over to DC. Well, DC snatched him up as soon as they had the opportunity, which is just funny. And that was a smart decision. Well, I guess we'll see going forward if he's able to sort of save DC, quote-unquote. I, I, we'll I, I guess I don't know about that. It would just be that, at the very least, you've got some stuff that people like that's coming out and doing all right. I think Peacemaker did well for, uh, for like, HBO Max. Uh, bu 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 uh, high Rex. Hey, hey there. Jay, you're the manager. Buy out Shad. Also, high rags. Hell. Buy out Shad. How does that Buy even make sense? Shad. Is he for sale? Maybe. Hi, rags. Oh. Hi. Who do you think is more of a prude, Mauler or Fringy? Mauler. Hmm. Ooh, I don't know. Uh. Hmm. If I if I considered one of you more prudish than the other, I think it would be. <sighs> wow, that's tough. Because I really, I really bear the burden of, you know, that sort of thing on on EFAP. I'm, I'm the lightning rod for that. But as oh, I don't know. I don't see either one of you as being more or less than the other in that regard. That's really tough. I think I would say. Fringy's more prudish. I find that interesting. Your knee-jerk reaction was me, but your thoughtful one was Fringy. So I wonder, maybe if we ask you tomorrow, it'll be different again. Who knows? I th well, I think I've settled on a reason, um, and I and I think I would probably stick with Fringy because it just you just I don't know. I guess you put out the vibe on a more surface level, but when I think about it, and I think about the way that both of you interact with these sorts of what the fuck was that i uh i bumped my microphone while i was typing something <laughs> it made a very funny noise like he'd licked it i keep hitting um, it all the time like whenever i'm drawing it keeps <laughs> keep bumping my hand into it because in my mind i'm sitting here talking about which one of you is more of a prude and then you just <laughs> you just get, <laughs> get licked, and i'm like wait i've got to recalculate everything oh but uh yeah, I I'd say I'd say it's I I think it's fringy, but I'm I don't I'm not sure. Who knows? Who well, knows? alrighty then. E. Oh, the the end there was an end to it. I didn't even spot on the other one I did. It said Oi oh. Molly, Iron Man three unbridled praise when. You know what? <laughs> Could be whenever now. Could be whenever. Fucking they release enough shit in phase four, maybe I will make a praise of Iron Man three. Who knows? It's not gonna happen, but who knows? Um, must have been lead in the water at Disney 2015, because it hasn't been the same since. Something happened. Something, Something. happened. Rag, why is there a red button on your desk? It's because when you press oh. it, it detonates, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, simple. It's, it's straightforward. Also, how does Fringy fit his bird wings below his trench coat? Well, I don't have bird wings, I just have arms. Hmm. They're crypto wings. You could fit the no, wings just under arms. a trench coat. Yeah, they're they're in... very thin wings. So no, they can... but I'm not. They're just arms. But you could do it. You know? I don't think I could hide wings under there, no. I believe in you. I don't. 
<laughs> Why is Jay not oh, an definitely. actual blue Jay? Jay don't want to be a blue Jay, you know? It's... Jay want to be Jay, not a blue Jay. There's a difference between Jay and a blue Jay. Mm -hmm. One of them's a bird, and one of them is a person. I'll let you figure out who's who. Uh, Mol L, it's time to cover Better Call Saul. There's no- that's never gonna make- that's not gonna work. Fucking rags and free, you haven't seen, like, any of it. I've only seen, like, six or seven episodes. And the idea that I'm gonna make them watch the entire thing to talk about the latest season? That ain't gonna happen. That's- that's what we call racism. The highest order. Is Jay going to sell Gamer Boy Willy Yogurt? Ew. Why do you ask such questions, chat? Weird question. Imagine being the editor that has to cut out all the scenes of Gore butchering gods to make room for more jokes and improv. Gore kills one god on screen. Yeah, that's really weird to think about, isn't it? It is odd. At least, at least there's plenty of scenes of him, like, torturing children, mentally speaking. Like, alright. We see Sauron personally kill way more people. Mm-hmm. Sauron. Still saying that, are you? Still saying Sauron. Fucking Sauron? Weirdo. Sauron. Sauron? Is it it's supposed to- which one is it supposed to be? The correct- Sauron? Do you say Run Swanson or Ron Swanson? Ron Swanson? So now, put Sa before Ron Swanson and then say his name. Sauron Swanson. Pretty much there, there you go. Beautiful. Saren. Saren. It reminds me of Thanos. It, we're, what does what does Dave Rubin say? Thanos? Or something like that? <laughs> I think he said Thanos. Thanos. I don't even Thanos. know how that happens. Everybody calls him Thanos. How do you get to That sounds to like Thanos? something that Wonder Woman would say. Thanos. Thanos, Thanos no. Give Thanos. me the stone, Thanos. Don't you do it, Thanos. <laughs> do not do it. No. What did what, what was Dave Rubin's quote again? What was it? He oh, said something that, like, like he would be praising Thanos or saying. Th did he say something like Thanos is gonna kill good. the SJWs or he was an SJW or some, some something like that? It was really oh, funny. Oh yeah, something like that. Holy shit! <laughs> the political commentary, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Thanos. <laughs> Molly, why is there a keyhole on your nose? Uh, why not? Isn't that common? People not have keyholes on their noses or something? Maybe you're the weird. I have two keyholes. So. I don't have a key key those on my nose. A keyhole. Maybe a people are just nose. seeing a keyhole where really there's just a hole. Yeah, it's just a hole. I don't think you could fit like a, a key though. You couldn't fit a key in my nose, I don't think. The mm. little my nostrils are not typically large enough for that sort of thing. M uh also, why is Fringy named after the evil business guy from Breaking Bad? That's... Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Gus Fring. It's like, oh, also Gus known Fring as looking. Evil Businessman. Yeah. Evil Businessman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you like Breaking Bad a lot, and that's, that's why you chose that name. I do like yeah. Breaking Bad, but I'm not... My name isn't the name of Gus Fring. It's not what it's based on. Mola Singh, Master of Puppets with Davy Jones's voice. That would take a long time. <laughs> a, a very specific thing. I, I like, yeah, I like the, how specific that is, and I think it would be pretty funny. We should, we should get Pirates of the Caribbean made, rebooted, and we should have that scene in it. Somehow. It would be great. We'll Even bring back Margaret all night. Robbie led reboot. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you can take Thor's load, then yes, you're worthy. Oh. <laughs> okay. Stipulation in the contract. I don't know what to think know. about that. Yeah. So the reason why Jane was worthy was because she fucked Thor, right? Oh, I, I don't. I, I. I don't know that we ever got a reason for it being worthy outside of that small indication that he yeah, said, he "I'm the reason. Yeah, you're the reason I am worthy. Yeah. You. You convinced me to blah 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 blah." And so the implication being, of course, if Jane was the one who inspired him to be worthy, surely she's worthy too. As far as I know, that's it. Yeah. And that's all we got, yeah, which seems a like, and, and that almost seems explicit, bleh, explicit where it shouldn't be, that he's defined being worthy as being at the point where you value um, saving human life, or saving life in general. Which, by the way, Thor, you kind of stopped doing that at the beginning of this movie, but you're still worthy. So, 
don't be putting down too many specific rules, otherwise everyone's going to stop being like, wait a minute. Rags, I promise this is the only time I'm going to do this. Will you please read out the lyrics to Ejaculate Fire by Death Clock? Also, hi, Fring Daddy G. Hey. Okay, this is a song by Death Clock. It's called I Ejaculate Fire. It begins... <clears throat> I ejaculate fire, a venomous fluid, cantankerous druid. It kills when I breed with my death seed. Checkmate, the world dies when I procreate. A bloody mess bubbles with heat. Fear the splattering, acidic, demattering. It burns, I'm fried to my loins. Testicular propane, tanks exploding. I perpetuate bile, a buildup, congestion. Epididymal retention. My semen is flames, flagellum is pain. Fuck fate. Earth's crushed from atomic weight with a hardened thrust. Deep in the core, a seismic tunneling, a rhythmic pummeling. Incinerate, a, the molten rock, a rancid genetic cannon fire. Murdering, new, nothing. Outcast, choke on gas, kill my sperm. Fate won't lead fast enough. Come coagulating blackness. When can I redecorate? Save for me the glorious death threats. Gasoline pumps through my heart. Horsing, uh, poison coursing somewhere down in that place. I feel the anger pulse again. It's been building. It's been building. Explode. Found my mission. Death ambition, exploitation, explode, short edition, new tradition, extradition, explode. Fucking fear is contagious. Go spread my flames, so fallacious. Fucking fear is contagious. Explode. All right. It's an interesting song. Mm. I feel like we've, I feel like I've learned a lot. I feel like there was a lot. To lay in, so that makes sense. Um, Certainly a changed man. Well, and that, that is the last of those Super Chats from that stream, though oh, wow. we've probably had as many come in that we actually answered, and so, you know, you could say progress has been made. To some, progress some argument, has been some, made, some, yeah. Some way. Um, but we're probably going to wrap up there, because that's a good block. And this, this then becomes a very effective sort of thing where people can find the thing they're looking for. Of course, the ones that were sent in today, we will read out and answer possibly next Wednesday. Um, if not, this Saturday, because this Saturday is very likely going to be uh, a chatty fap, where we're, gonna t we're just going to talk about the state of things. Not only, like I said, what, what what's coming next for all kinds of media and, uh, well... I guess that covers it, but but also what how we're gonna what we're gonna be covering and stuff like that, because I'm not sure, and and we're very close to our anniversary. We'll probably talk a bit about that and the plans for it as well. We are, yeah. Um, but yeah, twenty seventh today, and so the plan is the twenty seventh of next month. That Saturday is where we're gonna aim to to drop the old uh, anniversary stream, and it'll be the twenty sixth next year and the twenty fifth the following year, and until we get back to being on the twenty second again. Because uh, EFAP sounds go for, like a plan. EFAP will go for thousands of years. I've actually scheduled it, so no way anyone's getting out of that. Going to be podcasting from heaven because that's where all three of us will end up. I already have it planned. Pretty neat. Go I'm to going the... to the city of gods. Oh yeah, I'm hang out there. City. Go there. Yeah, I'm going to go there to omnipotent city. Do you think the Egyptian gods on Earth were never invited, and they were just like? Except Ra, so they imprisoned him because they were jealous. I guess, yeah. Ra came. He didn't tell anybody else. I guess he was just by himself. I, I don't know. I just want something to make sense. Damn it! Oh, I just realized we've been we're at the end of our phase four. You know, EFAP's fourth year, isn't it? Oh wait, no. Is it the beginning of our fourth year or the end of our fourth year? I'm confusing myself. Uh, it'll be the end of the fourth year. Right. <clears throat> And then, as of, like, September, it'll be year five. So, really, the MCU's copying us. Uh, you know what? It would seem that way. 
So, yeah, that's pretty rude. Uh, I'll get on with the lawyers about that one. But until that time, um, that's, that's, that's it for us tonight. We're, uh, thank you yes. all for hanging out. It's been fun. Mm -hmm. You all for very kind messages, donations, and uh, keeping us company. Absolutely. Until Saturday, we shall have to see you next time, folks. Have a good night. Toodle pip. Cheerio. Yeah. Toodles, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye bye. bye.